Hello and welcome everybody to the latest edition of the Buy Round Interview Show. I am joined today by uh, another former teammate of mine and uh, the last Burgess standing. The fourth brother. Um, yeah, the last man standing. Not, isn't not it? in terms of like coming on the on the podcast. We had two of, two of yeah, the four, two out of three. Um, but you're the last remaining active rugby league Burgess brother. Mm. Cheers, mate. We'll drink to that. I'll drink to that. How have I Cheers. done it? I don't know. <laughs> That's probably less of these. That's why I'm still oh, here. Right. Oh, yeah. Welcome. So you, it's actually a good point to um to start on you. You've really changed um a lot in the past. Don't say I've changed for you, for the mate, bad. Or. <laughs> <laughs> you've you've changed a lot from the first. No, like first well, you have to you have it, to evolve, don't you? You have to evolve. Mm. Do you think you've evolved? <laughs> Um, well, yes, I have. Now nah, it's a pleasure to be on. Thanks for having me, Jammer. Um, I remember when you started this up and you changed your Instagram to the bar and I thought, what's going on here? Uh, and I've said, he said, we'll get me on at some point. And um, glad you got me on. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm really pleased that you you come on board. Um, mate, you, like I say, talk, talking of change, I know that you've um, you've spoke to me a fair bit about. Um, the change in application towards um, longevity, longevity, obviously uh, towards mm. that back end of the career now. Can you just mm. talk us um, through a little bit of that? Yeah. What's I've always gone into been, that dedication. I've always been interested in like ulterior, ulterior like methods and sort of recovery methods and that sort of thing. And I've always sort of tried doing different things every year, just testing out stuff like I've done the Wim Hof I've become I met him and I've become a bit of his dis, one of his disciples <laughs> if you like I like to sort of spread the word on on the Wim Hof but but that this year I've never done a season without like drinking no alcohol and um I went to I dropped I actually dropped my wife off at, uh, like in Newcastle on New Year's Day this year and I it was like a 4am start she did the the Mark Hughes uh, 150 kilometer walk and um I just had this moment of clarity and it's the first time I've not drank on New Year's Eve. So I woke up fresh, it was a new day, driving up to Newcastle and I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna do 12 months of uh, no alcohol and she just started laughing at me. And I was like, what? And she's like, you can't do it, you won't do that. And then that was it then, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do it. And then also just saw it, it goes hand in hand with like recovery and playing and coming into like the twilight of my career is uh, I thought, why not? You know, we, we paid to, to perform and play at the top of our ability and like not paid to drink on every weekend. Like, uh, you know, I probably did when I first moved to Australia, but that's, uh, I think, and I, I don't think it'd work if every member of the squad did it because it just wouldn't work. You couldn't have all the young lads not drinking or even boys who, you know, like a drink, like forced to get off the alcohol. It's got to be a personal choice. And um, for me it was, and I just like, I got to uh, nine months. I did. I uh, did the whole season. So I did the uh, whole preseason, all the, through the season, and I got to. Um, it was Father's Day the other day on the Sunday. For the season had done, obviously, finished prematurely, and then I've been doing some gardening, <laughs> <laughs> chopping some trees down, some uh, hedges and stuff. I worked up a bit of a, a thirst, and then my neighbours were having a beer, and I was like, oh, you know what, nine months is pretty good. I'll have a beer on Father's Day and then uh, yeah, so I'm 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 back on the beers now, but but not I've definitely not I've I've definitely got a different relationship with alcohol now after that. Mm. You know the secret or the lesson? One, don't do gardening work. Yeah, that is. I don't. Good I ever, it's something I refuse. Really, Matt? No, no, can't you can't got, do it. Have you got a big garden? I mean, it requires uh, it requires some maintenance. Not, oh, actually, not ridiculous, but um, my, my wife will do that, or we'd, really? I'd pay pay someone to come in and do it because it's yeah. it's graft. It's graft, mate. I like it to be honest. It, do you find it soothing? It, it's sort of like I like just doing it on a day off or whenever I've got free time, yeah. and I've just a bit of a horticulturist. Is that the correct word? Uh, so we're proper into it now. We've got all the herbs. I go your own. Growing your own herbs, and we've got the girls, they love it too, they like getting involved, but I don't like anyone else cutting my lawn now. I'm a bit territorial like that. Mm. I've got my lawnmower, I've got my whippersnipper, or fly mower, whatever it's called. <laughs> Mate, you, you you know things have changed when you 
Calling it a whippersnapper. Well, no, when you're into your gardening. Yeah. Like, well, that's it. You like, just, that is something that's usually reserved for, you know, retirees. The, the, the elderly. Yeah. Well, I think I, I, I prefer the word <laughs> evolved, Jammer. Yeah, that's, that's not, fair. Not changed, because uh, you do have to ch evolve through your, for your life. Nothing ever changes by staying the same. Mm. If it's not if it's not broken though, don't fix it. <laughs> if you always do what you've always done, then you'll always get what you've always got. Is that the definition of insanity? I don't know. Expecting uh, the same uh, results. Uh yeah, so I, I don't think that's the official Oxford English dictionary definition, but Yeah, yeah. no, but I, I always like to do different things and like this year was different. And I, I, who's to say? I don't. I don't know if I'll do it again next year. But I'll just see. I'm a bit of a feel feeler. I like to see what's how I'm feeling. And this year I was feeling a no drink, and I thought it was good for me, just uh, to to be recovered. And I mean, it didn't really affect um, like my body. I don't think in terms of play, playing. Um, like I, I, I still played the same amount of games. Probably less. I was out. With my, I had a bit of a bad back, but. Yeah, yeah. What, what you know, like on, on the other side of it, obviously you, you take something away, but then you add some things in mm. in terms of your, your nutrition, your breathing. How often are you you practicing mm. the, the the breathing for, and how long does it go for a day? It, I'm assuming it's a daily practice. Yeah, I think uh, for me, I try to get it. I actually I, I got into like driving in from Cronulla if I'm on my own, if I'm not with like the carpool or whatever. I'll I'll turn the radio. I don't have any music on or anything. <laughs> just I, those thoughts. Half an hour of just breathing in the car. Obviously, you can't yeah. close your eyes. <laughs> in the, <laughs> but um, yeah, like Mate, it, I do exactly the same. But sometimes I'll have a podcast on and I'm just yeah. breathing. Yeah, that's it. I mean, everyone I'm has not, their I'm own not, version. No, but everyone does that. You're not doing anything different. Everyone breathes in the car. No one sits half an hour in silence in the car. Yeah, but everyone's breathing in the car. No, but like. Conscious breathing, conscious breathing, <laughs> box breathing, they call it. Mm. You know what box breathing is? I do. Yeah. It's yeah. it's crazy. I mean, um, breathing is one of the um, the body's automatic functions that you can have an element of control over. Yeah. So you can't control your heartbeat. No, no. There's definitely you something You can't control your thoughts. There is definitely something in it. Like I do it with my girls. Yeah. Like it, it is. I, I've started to do it a bit. And it, when, and when they're like, you know, hyperventilate and then they get so worked up, you just, you know, they do the breathing and then just settles them down. And like, definitely for athletes and players, it, 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 the biggest thing for me that I've learned throughout my career is like, players are all fit, are all strong, you know, we're all, and the, the big difference at the top of the cream of the crop is like the mental state and, and how you can, you know, manage that in a game and, and manage the up and downs as, as much as you can. And I think, you know, obviously the top teams are the ones that uh, manage it best, mm. better than most. And well, it's a slight edge, isn't it? Like mm. w w every one is looking for a way to improve performance as an individual and mm. as a team. You see it often now where you know, a team will score a try and they come together in that circle and there's a few mm. moments together of, of breathing exercises to sort of refocus on, on what's yeah. next. Um, so it is obviously it's making its way into the sort of mainstream um, mm. But it's not for everyone, is it? And that's the hard thing about team sport. Breathing, or team. <laughs> but but like the men, the mind, mindfulness, yeah. meditation. It's hard to manage a team because you can't get everyone on board, and and that, it it works really well in like individual athletes, like tennis players and golfers and that sort of thing. They'll probably they've all been using it for for years. But that that's the biggest obstacle I think is getting everyone on board, and you know doing it. Um, but like I just do it myself, yeah. I don't force it on anyone. But. Yeah, good on you. And then going back to England at the minute, yeah. Or in next week, is it? You head back? A couple more weeks. Uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It's it's something I've I've always like cherished is being able to play for England still and li living over here, but being able to go back, even when it's over here. But like you'll know as well. Like you look forward to it end end of every season, uh, and I wish there was more. To be honest, uh, the international games sort of still struggling a little bit. Um, I think the World Cup last year was 
you know, the, they've done well to get it uh, organised and everything, but um, yeah, it's just struggling, I think, and we, we need to keep working at it. And yeah, I've always been a big supporter of the international game and, you know, I'd play for free if, if I had to, and I think this year we probably will be doing, but <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's just like, I um, obviously it's a great way for me to finish off my season having been cut short with the suspension. And so how's that worked for you with the the, the sort of training? So you yeah. got suspended against Cronulla and then you've missed yeah. all the rest. So what was that, a month ago? Yeah, so it was a weird one because like we I got three weeks suspension, but then we had the buy too. So it was basically like four weeks. The buys don't count, which a couple of people thought they did. And I was like, those people were wrong, Tom. It's a, t it's a, t a weird, I mean, there's there's an argument that it should count because if you got suspended earlier in the year, you would have missed that game. I don't know. It just depends when you buy, isn't it, really? <laughs> it's a bit unlucky. The buy round. I that's the support. viral. We've got no game. No, we've got no game. <laughs> uh, that's Especially it. not if you're suspended. But but I guess that would have been quite difficult for you to to plan for. Obviously, um, looking to make finals and then get some games under your belt. Hopefully, play the grand yeah. final and then go. But it's not worked out that way. So yeah, I mean, I was I'm a really like positive guy. I always thought you know we were going to get there, and I, so I've been training really hard, and um, the guys have been really good with me, like running me and. I've been obviously involved with the team still and running against like players against them in the, the reserve team and making sure their prep was right. But yeah, just being like keeping fit, uh, doing lots of running. I feel like I've been training for a, a marathon, to be honest, doing lots of running and uh, probably forget that I'm 120 plus kilos. How'd you go training on your own? I don't, have you been training on your own? Or was um, a couple, couple of you at South that were still? There was a few, there was a few in and out. Like I had Big Latrell in the last week. He was suspended too, but um, no, they were, they, I was training with other players too, um, but then I, mine was quite sus specific to me, so I, I did a fair bit on my own as well. But what about like, what about now? Why are you I like uh, it. Like legitimately I like the, um, it's a challenge, like it's definitely a challenge, but I like the bit of a, can you swear, mind fuck? Yeah, yeah. yeah a bit of a mind fuck sometimes, isn't it, when you train on your own, mm -hmm. you just like a battle with yourself, like you could just finish right now if you wanted to. Brilliant that. And like, but now nah, I've got to, I'm going to go because you like, you call yourself a week, week, yeah, whatever. And yeah, yeah just, I, I sometimes like that. And like, I just went down to Redfern and did some training then. And just, is that why you were like, just touching, yeah, <laughs> just, to, no, actually, I had another appointment, but uh, just touching on like the, the season, I think it, it wasn't um, one thing, but I think like you talk about we moved to Hefron to this nice, shiny new facility, and sometimes. You can lose that subconsciously, that red fern. You know, we had that it, just going in there. You smell that hard work and that grit. And I feel like, um, you know, sometimes, even though you, you you try your best to to take that with you to the new facility, like we did really well. And then sort of, when we were in there, I think we were like five from five, and then we just sort of went down a little bit. I just don't know whether or not that played a part. Uh, you know what you could be onto something i guess that identity piece you know we see mm. we it's it's a big part of team sport mm. these days about what you what you stand for who you represent yeah and um, i think there's probably i think we're looking at maybe doing a bit of work there still next year in the preseason. like we may, we'll go between both and still be able to have that red fern in us yeah um it's a good thought but back to all things um international action before we go there yeah. that that when you when you speak about um being told what to do and just finishing early mm. like when I, when I was in pre-season I'd always sorry not pre-season off-season training so mm. do stuff on my own I'd always like s set myself something up mm. but I'd always finish um early because I could because I knew once I started playing yeah. or train like proper team training I could never do that mm. it's like a weird power thing and even now I'll I still train. But give like yourself it, a little carrot. Uh, I give myself plenty of carrots. Um, but with I go and do a spin class at Body Fit Gym. Yeah. Always leave five minutes early. Really? Because it's like I, 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 I enjoy being told what to do. Like, okay, we're going to go because it gets the best out of you. But just like having that little bit yeah. of power to go, I'm done. Because you, you can't shout at me if I go early. 
you can't find me if I go early. It's such a weird mentality that I've just been like, yeah. I need, like I've been told what to do for so long. You need that power back. Need that power, need that, yeah, bit of power. Well, there's, it's inc inconsequential if I leave early. But all things international football, I had some of my um, my favourite memories um, on the international mm. scene and I, I agree with you. It, it needs to be on a bit more of a higher pedestal, in my opinion. Mm. Um, there, there is some good work going on in the background, but we've got to, we've got to do better. And there's a, there is a bit of a difference between what's happening in the NRL versus what's happening in England. Um, mm. But yeah, like I say, some, some fantastic memories in camp. Some of those, yeah, involving you. Yeah, plenty of good memories, didn't we? I think we uh, obviously my first involvement was the thirteen World Cup. Yes, and. Uh, a little camp in South Africa was. I'm glad you brought it. Was up. a great introduction. Um, it was. And then, um, obviously, we roomed together in 14, didn't we? Let's not skip. You 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 skip past what the South Africa. What do you want to talk about in South Africa? Well, <clears throat> we go oh, for our lis listeners and viewers. We go um, to a place called Soweto in in South Africa. Yeah. Um, meeting you for the first time. Um, you know, and I'd. Been living in Sydney for two years at that point. I think you'd been not too dissimilar. Yeah, like well, obviously it was my first season. Yeah, yeah, you know. Okay, well, you got to read the room, um, know your surroundings. We're in Soweto, South Africa, not really known for its coffee culture. Uh, it didn't take us long to figure that out. You know, a few of the lads after training would go for coffee. We're all ordering, and Tom Burgess, excuse me, can I get a three quarter latte, please? <laughs> And this poor waitress <laughs> is just going, what? And you're like, a, a free, f and you do that, the symbol with the hands as if that's, you know, yeah. you know, like you reduce, you go full finger, thumb yeah. spread and they go three quarter <laughs> latte. She's like, mm, and then it came to you. Like it, there was like the two shit, the double shot cafe and the milk on the side. And you basically had to make it yourself. <laughs> and everyone else is just going, what the fuck is he ordering? It's so funny free... that you remember that. Mate, it's brilliant. That's why I remember it. Because I can remember th everyone else is going, what the fuck is he on? Like, for, You know who that like, came from? That come from Sam, that. Because he used to order him all the time. And he's he's obviously impressioned on me. And I was like, oh, I'll, I'll do that then as well. You mm. know? Well, what's the difference between a three-quarter latte just... and a strong latte? Or well, latte extra shot? Well, there's just less milk. Small, No, small latte extra shot. That's a free quarter Smart, latte. Uh, extra shot. I suppose if you don't want the extra shot though, you just want less milk. I to be honest. We asked for a week. I don't want I I don't ever I think I've <laughs> since that day I've I've, I've never ordered a three quarter latte again, so I didn't want to make my own latte <laughs> on the on the table. So. To, to to be fair, it it was a bizarre place. I remember getting a muffin, uh, a blueberry muffin over there, and it came like heated up with uh, some butter which was you know uh, optional on the side and then like some shredded cheese <laughs> yeah. and cream and I, I was a bit like that, yeah. what what where where's the what am I going to do with this cheese and this blueberry muffin it was well, a good I guess experience that's a wasn't it clash of cultures um, did you go to the, the the camp the year before no no I didn't see uh, we were both first time in South Africa weren't we mm. but um yeah I just remember the, the bus trips like getting lost on the the bus drivers used to drive six hours to come pick us up and then we remember we used to go Tom oh, that, that was the worst wasn't it you know, your head on those <clears throat> trips <laughs> that that one in particular that I know the one you're referring to when day off we got lost as well um, we're going to these caves mm. I can distinctively remember it we're going to these caves about caves about forty minutes away and we're going to see some of the very first um known human remains yeah. and i'm like that's that's awesome yeah. bear in mind 2013 like i think i had a an ipad yeah uh but you know probably not the same sort of culture now around po in entertainment on those sort of yeah, trips yeah, yeah. And i thought i don't need to take it because you know the lads <laughs> are there we're going 40 minutes gonna, gonna have a blast yeah and then we ended up for five hours we were driving around trying to find this place 
Oh, it's, and it's mad, right? like my head <laughs> completely fell I think off. I've got some photos of you still on that on that bus trip. When... Well, it, it, like I was like, sort of riding the wave because I could see other people get wound up. So then I'd be like, Oy! <laughs> and then my head would go yeah. be like, just leave me alone. But then like, it was hard to get mad at the bo- blokes, wasn't it? Because like, well, mate, they're, they're just... yeah, it, all, all mates stopped and in, in a petrol station, asked for directions. This is like two hours in. I'm thinking, well, surely now, yeah. like, we can't be that far away. And he, he, the poor bloke didn't know where he was going, did he? No. It, it was... It's funny, it, it I was, remember It was not being, funny. I was just, like, because it was my first like, time with England and stuff. I always just remember... It's quite fuzzy, all my memories, because I'm just... I was just happy to be there. You know, I got probably late included, and I was just, like, buzzing off everything. So, like, all those sorts of experiences, I was just thought it was just a bit of fun. Mm. but it's funny how you look at things yeah it is well the three quarter latte the um the bus trip in soweto to the ancient remains uh but then yeah 2014 we roomed together and you know I, i'd like to say i you know we talk about evolving and changing you know, you've got salty dog <laughs> coming in and that's not a euphemism, <laughs> euphemism for any listeners out there that's uh Salty the hair, dog. The hair product that or the hair shampoo, a special hair shampoo. I would just run with, you know, whatever <laughs> whatever's in the hotel. And you're like, yeah, try this special shampoo. You liked it, didn't you? It was it was good. It was a bit it of spray, was, you know, was, it a, salt, was it a spray or spray, shampoo? Just I think you had it all, salt. didn't you? Yeah, I don't know what I had back in. Just yeah, I don't know. I was probably just caught whatever up. I got given for free. <laughs> 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 um but yeah, I remember that was, uh, was a good trip, that one, in, in Australia. Just uh, a bit awkward at start, wasn't it? When we, you know, after playing each other in a grand uh, final. But then we, you got, we really. got past it. I'm, I, I wasn't <laughs> bothered. Well, sorry, I shouldn't say I wasn't bothered, but it's not yeah. where I was in camp. Well, you, you'd ruined with Sam in the World Cup in 13, and then you ruined with yeah. me in 14. Have you I ruined kept, with George? I, I'm pretty sure I have in some point, yeah. Some point in time. Yeah. I kept getting the short who's, scores. Who's the best, you reckon? It's hard to say. Put on the spot, yeah. It's hard to say. Uh, Biffa. You, know, you, never, <laughs> you never got, uh, you never caught me um, feeling myself over myself, did you? So? No, no, you you, <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> uh, but, mate, there were some fantastic times that we had in camp with, like, the likes of yourself and yeah. Batty and or John Bateman, Elliot Whitehead, Josh Hodgson, loads yeah. of the English lads as well. There's some, re- like... Some some memories for life there, and obviously, mm. you know, we we went through that period with Steve McNamara, and then then Wayne came in. That that like you, you played in that game at Anfield, yeah, mate. That was good, yeah. When we won, yeah. How good, mate? Honestly, when people ask about like favorite memories from football and career, um, the semi final win against Tonga, mm. which was just in like yeah, the, was... insane. I, I up there, yeah. can't believe they came back like they did. Yeah. Um, when, yeah. when do you remember when Jerry? Were you on the field at the end? No, I was on the bench. Mate, what was it like for you? What, you know when McGilvery intercepted it, and we thought like I've just gone. Oh yeah, it's over. And mm. he fucking dropped it. <laughs> what was it like for I, you? I just remember um, six in my mind. Gailey getting like basically trampled by time <laughs> and he went the full i went the field and then passed it into i think it was lola here and scored and i was like oh shit we're on here like and then i don't know how sp- smelly at the end the hand of mm. god it's basically would have that won him that would yeah would have won them yeah uh so they yeah but it's more it was more mcgilvery intercept over done i don't Just, remember that no he, so they were attacking our line mcgilvery got an intercept ran up and he got tackled and he spills the ball when he got tackled. Really? And we've gone from like, oh, to like, oh shit, now we're back yeah. on board again. And they had about a minute left. If, oh. if he keeps all that ball, we just march down the head. field. And and you can imagine, because I remember after the game, Jez was like, I'm so, like, thank you so much, man. Like, thank you so much. It was like, yeah. what are you doing? Um, that, but the, the Anfield day. Yeah, that was good. Like, back on home soil and for you probably. Oh, mate. Playing in Liverpool. Insane. Not, like um, I, not Everton, but... Yeah, but like him to, for me to play in the home city, he was... Yeah, that was a good tour. I mean, I, always playing those tours against New Zealand, we've won twice against them. And 
first one was class like I think that was 15 yeah and then the second one 18 yeah I've always had, had good uh sort of times against New Zealand just the old fours Australia we still mm. need to get them well, we've got yeah you've got the ashes coming up in that's next year yeah next se- and the next season mm. in Australia so yeah, I was a bit like I was good that that got um obviously cancelled and then in 2019 2020 or something else and then uh yeah and obviously the world cup then got delayed we should have been this year or like 2023 probably would have been like or 2022 probably would have been a rest year on it mm. think about it but um but then yeah this year's obviously it just uh, it, it's good they've organized the tests against tonga i think it's uh really going to be a really good test for england and be huge test man and like you know yeah we um we really need that um sort of level of because let's be honest you know tonga are up there now with uh, the likes of australia new zealand samoa so we it's really good that they've come over i've actually got quite a few of the teammates in the squad so it'd be uh it'd be funny going up against those lads and i'm looking forward to it yeah it should be good um obviously we're speaking all things england uh we both grew up there how much Sydney? How much has Sydney changed you from the the lad that used mm. to bounce around the streets of of Dewsbury? Uh, and you know, there's I think there's a lot of positive change. Mm. I know I've changed for the better for being here. Yeah. What, what 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 did it do to you? Yeah, I like to think I'm still uh, the same person, but like it definitely opens your mind a little bit to the world. Obviously, uh, you're from England. You live in England. You you, you know you. A lot of people I know I went to school with, you know, have never left the town. And <laughs> they're sort of that's quite common in England for for people just to live and die in the little towns and just sort of live out their lives there. But do you know that song? We live and die. Yeah, I mean, we live and that, die. That was on the that was on that documentary, wasn't it? That Leeds did. Oh, was like it? That one, yeah, great. Ch- I can't remember who sings it now. Yeah, so that's that's it. So I think yeah, definitely has opened my uh, my sort of gaze to the world. And like, I suppose if you've been here, you travel around a bit more and, um, you know, like it's funny when you go back to England and you're like, you've got a weekend, you're like, oh, let's, let's go. You know, we're only like two hours from Italy or, you know, Amsterdam or like something like that. But like when you're living there and like, you don't really do, like you don't ever do that, do you? When no. you're living and from England. So yeah, I think it's definitely done that for me. And um, I mean, now I'm I'm obviously um, married and got two kids over here, and I'm pretty, pretty settled now in Australia. I was the uh, the last brother to come to Australia, but the first to get my citizenship. Um, so I've got my passport now. It's gone. Got my passport. Traitor. Um, but like I said, I'll never uh, I'll never renounce playing for England. Um, not that I would ever even have the option of doing mm. that, but. Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm always proud English, and I love going back. I'm, I get butterflies thinking about going back to England um, and just seeing everyone and more. Because that, that's what I, I miss, like my mates back there. I miss all them. Miss uh, just the, you know, the the working class feel of the of the place. You know, I th- I feel like um, there's a bit of complaining over here sometimes about stuff that you shouldn't really be complaining about, and I, I miss that. that that refreshing sort of take on life is like you know we just get on with it and you know that sort of thing and but you know like i, I love australia now and I'll, I, I think i'll ever i don't think i'll ever relocate back to england like permanently but um yeah no definitely on the cards to go back there like down the track well obviously we, we can't live in there in when two, i was young two three three single, i used to think i used to have this theory that i was going to do Four months in Australia in the summer <laughs> when I'm like all the time. I'm going to do four months in Australia, four months around America and four months around like England mm. in the summer. But oh, to be not, young, that's not going <laughs> to, that's not going to go down anymore. But no. um, yeah, like that was a dream, but I, I still, I still like to keep going back there. And I, I said the other day, like I've got my flight back there, but it's, it's good to know you've got your return flight booked as well. I, say so exactly yeah. it's nice to go and knowing i've got a ticket to come back um that's why i, I think that's why i got my citizenship so quick because i just knew 
how much of a uh, you know shit fight it can be if you don't have like work here or mm. whatever happens. You know, like you never, you know, you never guaranteed anything with rugby league. So as soon as I could get my citizenship, I think you, you have to wait twelve months until after you get your PR. And I got it on the top, like the the day like, I could get it. Keen, keen, absolute keen. Yeah. And then all the there. boys were like, "What? Oh, like, how, how have you done that?" Like my brothers. And then they're all like struggling now to get this. <laughs> but I think Luke's got it. He's pretty onto it. But um, surely once you got PR though, and if you've got, there's a lot of rules involved though. Like I thought, if you got kids, it's play on because I've only got my no, parent residency. It's not. Yeah, so it's for, for you, you you have to keep um, renewing that every five years. Yeah. So I mean, if you want to do that, you can do that. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Got your passport. Know, if um, rugby league doesn't work out you could always just be an immigration lawyer i reckon i nearly did sam's for him because he was struggling i was going to do his for him and then he's obviously signed to go back to england now so that's messed it up for him he can't he can't get it now <laughs> he's unlucky i don't know why but i just think it's so funny that he can't do it that he so he's come to you like yeah he can't he's like oh, how have you done it john i'm like just fill out a few paperwork uh, it is it, to be fair that sometimes the paperwork for these things is uh yeah it's one of those ones you just gotta like get your head down and do it but mm. i think if you're motivated <laughs> enough <laughs> i i felt found it easy i just found it i did it i think i did because, it because no, bec oh. i did it on my phone <laughs> i did it on my phone, iphone my, my my when i went from the visa to the pr it's like oh do all these like checks and i'm like yeah, I might well, go you, on. You'd be worried about that, wouldn't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I don't know, un in, in my opinion, unnecessarily stressful. Yeah. Um, the, but yeah, the home for life. Um, it, it, is a bit, it is a bit weird that uh, I, I still find it a bit strange that this will be or likely mm. be my home for life. But um, mm. it is a... Mate, it's it's one of the it's it's an amazing city to call home. Yeah, especially we're both in the Shire now, mate. Shire boys, Shire crew. Do you know? You, you know, it's funny. Like I and you lived in the east. Hmm. I've been to the Shire with some people from the east, and they slag it off. Hmm. They say like it, like oh, it's a shithole. Yeah, like. Oh, there's no good cafes, restaurant. Charlie, the producer, doesn't have a nice word to say about the Shire. I remember some people because we did the Cronulla uh, Sharks game against the, yeah. against the Roosters, and I got and they're like, "Oh, this place!" I'm like, "Man, this mm. is paradise!" Like where I'm from, you want to come and see what it's like? Yeah, that like, you're slagging this place off. I know it's weird. Like I think there's some deeper sort of rooted things that have gone on. I think there's a obviously <laughs> we, before us before our time. Um, obviously, there's a I don't even know what went on with the Canola riots, but um, there's, I don't know what it is, yeah, but when I sometimes say I live in Canola, people are like, oh, it's a bit far away, that, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, like it's 45 minutes from the city. Like, half an hour. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I suppose I'm just, I didn't move there because I wanted to live there, but I just, it was more because the missus was from there and she, it was familiar for her and we ended up, which I actually rented first because I was skeptical, like, <laughs> Everyone that like I spoke to was like, oh, no, no, don't do it, don't do it. Who, who lives or oh, is from the east? And then so I rented there for a bit, thinking, oh, I'll probably just rent and then say I don't like it. And then, um, yeah, I liked it. And then I started looking at properties and I was like, you know, you can get a house for it. You can get an apartment in Coogee. So that was a pretty easy decision for me. Yeah, sign me up. I, I love where we live. It's I think it's amazing. Hey, um, <clears throat> wanted to ask you. We had your twin brother on here. Mm -hmm. What's it like being a twin? It's very, uh, well, I don't know. Like any, an identical twin as I well. I don't know any different, but yeah, I, no. I love it though. I, uh, I, I'm very proud of being a twin. It's something I wear as a, you know, a medal of honor. Um, because it is like, especially being an identical twin, um, there's something like interesting about it. Um, we, and we've definitely got loads of different stories have happened through our lives that have like kind of it could only happen to twins and like stuff like that there's definitely a deep connection you have with your twin and like yeah even when george moved to australia and i stayed in england for two like we had two years apart as twins that was a big deal for us 
But even stuff like I used to get like injured on the weekend. I know we both play in rugby league and whatever. There's a chance that you could both get injured. But I used, we used to get the same injury on the other sides of the world. Like each week I'd like hurt my ankle, he'd hurt his ankle. And then like, it's like he knew that we, we used to feel each other's pain. Did ya? Without even knowing what he'd done. But, so time difference, you're on the dance floor. <laughs> yeah. Ah, what's ah, this? Ah, <laughs> <on laughs> me back. Honestly, it's somewhat weird. Like, I don't know what it is, but it's there's definitely a telepathic thing that you have with your twin, like whether or not it's just because you spent your whole life with them, you know, how they're feeling or thinking. But then other times you think, what the what the fuck are they, what the fuck are they doing? Because <laughs> like, like, is it a different bond with you and George versus you and um, Sam and you and Luke? Yeah. Yeah, like it's different. It's different. Like you got your obviously your brother's bond, but then it's very like different with your twin, because you sort of like, you just sort of yeah, you're like the same person really. So it's in terms of like physical and stuff, but we we have quite different personality wise. But I think that we we've always like complemented each other. Mm. So like growing up. Um, I was like the, the talkative one and George was a sort of the quieter one. And I used to do all this talking for him. So like George didn't actually speak till he was about two, three, cause you know, I was always like, you know, and we had to go to speech therapy, um, cause it, it, but mainly for him. <laughs> and I just used to go along with him. But, uh, but yeah. Well, like, I suppose what else are you gonna do? <laughs> but then like f George is quite arty and he's quite creative and he's he's always, um, always had that in him from like a young age and like, drawing and stuff at school and then whereas i i never really i mean i, I don't mind it and I, I think whatever creativity i've got is just from like copying him mm. and then but then on the other side like i think um i'm a bit um i don't know like whether you, like more straight 180 or i don't know like mm. you think about that you know, I, I, I don't know if i've ever told you this story but <clears throat> when George was playing one of his first games for mm -hmm. the Dragons. It was a trial game. Um, and I've gone, I've, I was working for the Dragons at the time, went down mm -hmm. to the game and and saw Sam there. I'm sat with him watching. And um, George had shaved his head. Yeah, I remember this. And yeah. I've gone, I was there too. I've gone, tell you what, Sam. George looks a lot like Tom, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but being serious, because I can tell you apart because there's yeah. different hair hairstyles yeah yeah and the, the bent nose of, of and, george and he that, just said yeah and he goes well yeah. they, they are twins mate and i've been like it felt stupid oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> felt simple afterwards <laughs> felt i know what you mean though i do know you, what, you i'm glad you know what i, I know mean. what you mean i do know what you mean because like it, and when that's you get, what i meant i needed to someone that when you get to know us you, you sort of can tell the difference yeah um and I think because when you get to know someone's personalities, your mind actually changes how you view them. So it's like, I don't know, I've, I've got this theory, like when you when you meet a girl, like they look totally different to when like, if you marry them, like 10, 10 years down the track, don't you think they look different? Yeah. In your mind. But like for, for, for like me, like when I first moved to Australia, a lot of people, no one could tell the difference between me and George because we, you no, know, I was just, Come from England or whatever. I used to get called George every day, but now, now people know me and they, they, they can tell the difference, like you said. But then if he changes something, like you said, he cut his hair. Oh shit, they look alike yeah. again now. It, you, you know, j just on that as well. You, you've gone on quite different career peaks mm. as well. Do you, was that strange? Because obviously. You know, you, you don't need me to tell you. Like in in fourteen, George was mm. like arguably the best front row in mm. the game, and and you were still fi finding your feet a little yeah, bit. No doubt, yeah. Um, and then he's you know through injury, like mm. he sort of faded off a little bit. But you've managed to mm. to maintain. It, it, is that a strange thing to well to live, not to even um, have to experience to, to to live? You kind of. You know, you're at different points yeah. in your career, but you're at the same club. Yeah. Was, was that strange? It was a bit um, or, hard. Or is it still strange? It was hard at, at one point when obviously we had to make a decision on contracts and that sort of thing. Because when I, when I first came to Australia, I signed a, a deal 
a one year deal and then went on with that and then we ended up getting to you know, a similar level and we both sort of signed the same deal, me and George. So we had the exactly the same deal on the same amount of years and everything. And it was kind of cool and then but then you know nothing lasts forever does it and like you said injuries play a t big part in our careers and and sport so um i think it's just the look of the draw and i actually got injured in 2014 i, I had a bad foot problem and I, I i was off my feet for like three months at the start of the year uh, which not a lot of people know really and then I came back into the team like mid-year and then so George had been playing like week in week out smashing his body from a young age uh, you know when I was I was I was uh, injured or was back in England and uh, I think that played a role in in probably where George's body was at because we've got very similar bodies anatomies like my hips are similar to George's like but it's all about like how you manage that and um Obviously, back in the days of Madge Maguire and everything, like it was sort of like train, train hard and deal with it later. And and uh, George, being a young, twenty one, twenty two year old, he was just all about training hard and you know wanting to get that goal. And and Sam was very motivated, and we all were. But Sam used to drive us probably just as much as the coach did when we first moved to to Sydney. He was into me and George and. You know Luke as well, and just saying like we've got to do this. We're gonna do. I remember vividly, Sammy. I rolled my ankle in my first game in Australia. And it was that sore, and he goes, "Just don't worry about it, Tommy. Just strap it up, ice it up, and get back out there." And and I ended up having about I've had about three operations on my ankle throughout my um throughout my career. And didn't let it heal, but mm. that's just how Sam was, and um, you know. It, he wasn't worried about longevity. He was just worried about ripping in and yeah, there's in and certain out. certain things, uh, you know, great traits that you need for that. But then obviously, uh, yeah, if you can have longevity in rugby league too, it'll serve you well as well. Mm. But um, yeah, so I think that played a part in obviously George's uh, career and I've managed to just be there or thereabouts and stay in, in the in the game and I've, I've obviously just I've tried to look after my body I think having three brothers in rugby league like all doing well you sort of take parts and good things and things and learn from mistakes as well yeah I've their always, experiences help shape yeah you because so I guess you'd have that more that closer con mm. connection to the both the positive and the negative mm. aspect of, of those experiences yeah so I've always like tried learning from my brothers in in all those sort of areas and if one of them had an injury they were doing their rehab like shoulder rehab i remember just doing i used to do all some shoulder rehab as well when i was young because i used to like think oh, i don't want to get a bad shoulder so i'm gonna i've seen what it can do to him and then luke you know i had a bad knee and I've, i did all his knee rehab and then like sort of things like that and then i got into yoga from a young age because my hips and i feel like that's obviously must have played a part in in where I'm at now, but definitely I remember, feeling I rem it now. Yeah, I remember actually you you begin to come into camp. That was one of the first things mm. that struck me about you is like how big you were into like the stretch, stretching and, and yoga Pilates mm. element of it. And I was kind of like, don't know if it's for me, but obviously mm. it, it, it's paid off. Like no, it to does have help. that. It does help, yeah. Um, you know, act now, gain the benefits a little bit later on. Too. They sure do. We're going to take a quick break from the podcast to tell you about AG1, the daily foundational nutritional drink with all your needs in the one place. I like to look after my health and AG1 takes care of that for me. No more tablets, vitamin pills, vitamin pills, all the health nutrition I need all in the one place. Every single morning, it's as easy. Open up the fridge, scoop of AG1 in a glass, cold water, stir it with a fork, drink it. It tastes great and it helps me know. It gives me the peace of mind that all my nutritional needs are taken care of all in the one drink. It really is as simple as that. And also anybody that knows anything about health benefits knows that it comes with adding simple routines to your day. It's not about magic pills. They're not going to work. AG1 helps me be the best version of myself by having this new habit 
of every single morning having that drink, I know my nutritional bases are covered thanks to AG1. A lot of athletes are now taking AG1 and with 75 high quality ingredients, it's no wonder why. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com forward slash buy round. That's drinkag1.com forward slash buy round. Check it out. Were you conscious then in your own mind of you know, forging your own path? Um, yeah. I think um, I, I remember uh, vividly like Georgie was uh, like straight away like, yeah, I'm, I'm all in. I want to come out here because we'd just come on holiday to Australia. We were on holiday in Australia. But I definitely loved it over here. But um, I was a bit more reluctant and I just said to myself, like, I, I want to finish up my contract with Bradford. I would still had two years left on my contract. And um, I said, like, no, I appreciate the offer, but I'm going to stick out my contract. And... Um, that's what I did, and it was a big. It was a big call because, like, me and George uh, splitting up at that time was big. Because how old would he have been at that time? Like nineteen, twenty? Uh, we were eighteen. Oh, you eighteen? Yeah. Yeah. So we were eighteen uh, at the time. Just uh, just turned eighteen. Yeah, and like we, so I ended up staying at Bradford. George came over for the preseason in I think it was two thousand and ten. Yeah, two thousand ten, and then. That year in eleven uh, in 2011 season in Super League, that's when I made my debut for Bradford. And then uh, George sort of was in the system and he ended up, because at the time they only offered us a part-time deal and you were going to be like working as well. But then George had a really good, um, like he was probably ahead of me at the time because he got picked for England Academy, played against the Aussies. Um, and then they smashed the Aussies over in England to, in a two-game series and then, after that, because he played so well, they bumped him up to a full-time contract. And it probably worked out for the best, because if we were both on it, we, it would have been a bit hard to get us both in. So I think everything happens for a reason. And then, and then when I obviously played for Bradford, George probably would have been in front of me there. So I, I might not have played, might, may not have made my debut when I did for Bradford. So I think it all worked out in, in the end. And um, yeah, like, I, I loved my time at Bradford. I really like, loved playing with those players, even though we didn't have a, a great deal of success. We were, had, you, were you part of? You you were there when they yeah when we went into admin when, when we went into administration yeah yeah we've like I forgot about that we see um all those like you know players that you knew like Bryn Hargreaves as well and players like that who affected massively, but like uh yeah like we had a great crop of players we had like Elliot Whitehead. John Bateman, Bateman was there, wasn't Luke he? Gale. Uh, we had like um, we had some good Aussies over there. Matt, you know, we had Matt Orford came over. We had Heath Lestrange, Brett Carney, like loads of good players. Glenn Hall and and I like I just caught the end of Steve Menzies too, but like yeah. So we, I love my time at Bradford and I never regret coming over when I did because then I, I did my two years and then. Like you said, at Bradford, we were in a really tough spot financially and they literally said to me, we can't offer you, you know, any more than what you're on now. And so um, I wasn't going to go backwards at that stage of my career. So I, I was, I had an option to go to Wigan for three years on, you know, good money and good club. Or I um, I took the, like a punt with South and South, off, they offered me a one year deal. on a, on Just a one year? Yeah, one year. And it was just like, um, it was not mi minimum training, wage. Yeah, minimum. Yeah, minimum wage, not training trial. Yeah, it was minimum wage, and I had. But uh, back when they did the matches, so I had three k a match. So I was dying to like get my uh, debut, but I played for the Bears first, and then, like you said, yeah, my tra trajectory to where I am now was different to George's because when I came in thirteen, he was or he was starting, you know, front rower and in round one against. I think he, he scored like heaps of tries in that. Or loads, I should say, loads of tries. In that first uh, year, he, he played in, and he was uh, hit the the comp by storm, and no one could handle him. And then um, I was just still working, working in the background and training. And there's something definitely to say about the training over here affects like 
your, your level. Like for me, I don't think I'd be the player I am now if I'd not moved out here. Like for you, you, you I think you're a bit different because you were obviously, I think you were at the top of your games when you moved out here, whereas I was still like a developing player. And I, you know, I played for England Knights uh, off the back of my season with Bradford Bulls, but I was nowhere near like um, playing. You know, I don't think for England or anything like that. And um, and then yeah, my my year in the NRL, I managed to just get in to the squad that year. But I think I was just sort of, I've got you to thank actually for my England debut. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, not, not many people know about no, that. We'll, but, we'll save that for a rainy day. <laughs> another time. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but like I said, I, I, I was speaking about this the other day. I think just the, the, the conditions over here just suit rugby league better. Mm. Um, and like the training you do in pre-season sets you up for your season. And like you just if you compare the two, like you've got winter in, in England versus like summer coming into like all well, the, the length of time as well that you get to prepare yeah. for a season like it's, it's all about reps in it and mm. like we, we do we do reps on the field and just the amount of reps you can get done in australia compared mm. to england well e just, even that meant like I, I don't know what it was like at bradford but times at st helens it was like you get the text like training grounds closed because yeah. the fields like you're untrainable so you can come in and do the gym mm. or it was a, it was actually a danger to, there was times where it was mm. that dangerous like the advice like no, don't right. come to training today lads but you used to hear that didn't you yeah bastard oh damn oh, it oh no or mate well you smart people do you'd make a prediction the night before check the weather yeah. forecast mate. there's no way <laughs> no way we're training tomorrow go to the pub go to the pub it actually it actually nearly caught some Did of it? us <laughs> Yeah, we uh, we made the prediction. No way, we're in tomorrow. <laughs> Went out. Well, we were still in. Yeah, we just uh, um, they managed to hire out uh, a, you know, like one of the Barn, like no, of like not a but um, we went to like a David Lloyd Center. Yeah, it's like bastard. Play a bit of basket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. Yeah. To be honest, you probably had a good session, didn't you? Yeah, Still. yeah. Oh, mate, ripped in. You um, can do that, I think, like once in a blue moon, like every now and then. Mm. It's, it's good for team morale. Mm. I remember when when we went into admin in, at Bradford, administration, like the coach was gone. Um, Mick Potter had to leave. But then he, he stuck around and said, oh, no, I'll, I'll still I'll stick around for no money. And then we all we literally went and got on the piss all week, no training. And we played Wigan away, and they were like top of the league. They, I think they had a few out, but um, we won that game after being on the piss all week. So, mm. yeah, there's definitely a, a, well, visit, a united uh, cause. Yeah. Well, what I, I didn't have this on my sort of questions, but that environment of being a, a group of blokes, knowing they're not going to have a job, mm. or most of them, they're not getting paid. You know, you've got you've got options. Mm. That wasn't. Um, most of them probably didn't. Mm. Is that? It was a tough period, yeah. Like I remember a lot of boys who, you know, were coming towards the end of the career and like the, they had cars and stuff and like quite a few of them sold the cars. They ended up having to like, you know, really cut the spending and it really, really did uh, like affect a, quite a few of them. And, you know, we talk about Bryn Hargreaves and we both know him and, Mm. I'm, I still remember I get, get goosebumps a little bit like in, in talking to the boys after a game um, against Leeds we were at Headley and he grabbed everyone in the sheds and told him he was told everyone he was going to retire at the end of the year because he's just he can't go on with um, you know the game like how it is and how we've been treated and that sort of thing and yeah like it was a really tough time for everyone involved at Bradford because you look at the league over here and it's just you know, another level now. Um, we're, we're leaving that like with the the strength of the game over here. Like, yeah. There's no way a club could go into administration. No. Like they, I remember reading something all the, the you know the Warriors uh, how well they've done this season. It's like oh they were they were close to going going under. It's like mm. they they never were. They're not no. not in in reality. Like no. they. But the, even the, like the, the, the grants support the players. Players' wages were never in doubt. Like that's the thing. Like we actually weren't getting paid. Like 
uh, and we were like we'd get paid a bit and then a little bit more and then and you st and you you guys made that decision to keep playing yeah and like like you you're not yeah and the coach the the coach got sacked and and to be fair to Mick Potter he just said like I'll I'll stick around till the end of the year and ended up you know just coaching for no money it's crazy that um, like and the, the like for for the listeners out there. You know, Bradford Bulls, they're not in the Super League at the moment, but you, you're a Super League team. Yeah. Like, you're playing in... They were a powerhouse, you they, know. They, only they a were. couple of years before, yeah. like, won the, won the grand final in, you know, six. Made they the, did the beat final. the Penrith Panthers yeah. in, um, in the World Cup Challenge. I remember Stuart Fielding. Yeah. Was it Penrith Panthers? I can't remember. Might have been... Um, oh, no, they didn't win in 06. Maybe they won in, they won in 05. Yeah. West Tigers was it? They played West Tigers, I think. Yeah, I can't remember. I remember Stuart Field and was. Well, Bradford won a fair few comps, but yeah, it's, so. it's it's something that I guess over here you just couldn't fathom. Obviously, we went through that that period of COVID where all the players had a collective bargaining agreement mm. and they chose to take pay cuts. Now, I believe that was reimbursed to some extent, mm. but yeah. over there, like. It's there was like, no central fund. The RFL didn't come in and say like, "Oh no, we're going to make sure, hmm. you know, you guys get paid." Yeah, no, it's it's yeah. I've I've been involved recently in the, the the most recent CBA, and sometimes I had to just sit back and think. Actually, you know, we have got to give a little bit here because, like, coming from the Super League background, I just know how good we have got it here. Obviously, we're fighting for players and for growth because you know you want your share. If the, if the game's You're doing You're fighting well. for fairness. Yeah, but you're protect, at least here, you're protected, right? And that's what I we're to keep reminding myself was like, you know, the NRL do a good job. They do, you know, look after the players and, just, you know, so they should, but we have got it um, good over here and we're, we're, I'm, I'm very thankful that we we have. Yeah. Um. So, mate, on that decision, you, you, you're weighing up this this offer with Wigan. Um. On, on decent money to mm. then to come over here. I, I'm assuming it was the the lure of playing with your your, your mm. three brothers that you know tipped yeah. it in the scale, tip, tipped it in favour. Yeah, well, to be fair, like you're right. If if I'd not had my brothers there, I probably would have just gone with the option of you know security and you know staying at Wigan, which was a good club. I mean, there's no doubt I probably would have come out here at some point. But um, but I think the phone call I, I had a phone call with George and he just was like yeah just honestly just get yourself out here like if you have to live with me for free you know you can and like that was it and I thought I just made the decision and thought I'll give it a crack like I'm back myself and yeah it worked out still here sure did um what was it like for you when you first land here um you obviously you'd, you'd been before on a, on a holiday. Yeah, but it's obviously it's like life here is very different from you know the not yeah. the streets of Dewsbury, but you know the area of Bradford, Oddsall. No. Um, you go from you go from there, rocking up there every day to yeah. okay, you're living in the eastern suburbs. You know, training at Redfern with you know some of the obviously your brother is one of the game's greatest, but obviously you got people like Johnny Sutton, Greg Inglis. There it must have been, mm. and, and and I guess you've come as well. Well, you got a target on your back because you're English, and then your three brothers are coming here. Um, yeah. The the drive to want to prove yourself as your own independent person mm. must have been huge. Yeah. It was, yeah. I mean, like um, like I said, I, everyone thought I was George when I first moved here, and then uh, obviously the comparisons straight away. Like I used to get co we got compared for everything, like. Um, to who's the, got the best one rep bench press yeah. who's got the best that sort of thing I like, remember yeah. we used to do these VO2 max testing out at university in pre-season and um, George went first and he got like a really good score and I didn't know what score he got but I just went on and we got exactly the same score which is another twin thing but um, stuff like that like um yeah, I definitely had a point to prove when I when I moved out here, and I think sometimes that's good. It's mm. good for you to have that because you, it's what drives you, doesn't it? And you know, I saw George doing so well. I, I remember seeing him like when he came back to England. Uh, we had we played in the England Knights tournament together, and he'd he'd flown back for it, George. 
and I we so we had that tournament together with a good group of lads and and uh, thinking shit you know he's in good nick like he's in better nick than me and like he he was just I remember thinking has he got bigger or and I I just I, I felt like he was just a, a cleaner human I don't know what it was like just you got your shirt off all the time over here aren't you so <laughs> well you know but you get sunburnt you know, lad. I do lad I do but uh but like yeah just like that so I, I felt I felt like I I've got you know my training partner back and I was like really excited when I first moved here That's on exciting. on that excitement and and living out east you, you've been here being here on holiday mm -hmm. but again it's different when you're here to work right mm -hmm. so was it was it difficult not to be distracted as a what twenty mm. year old living in Sydney's East, but you mm. and a professional athlete, obviously, yeah, it you know, was plenty of distractions there. Definitely, like I, m I remember, I, m I moved in with Sam first because he had a spare room when I first moved here, and I'm, I lived with him, and he lived right behind King's Cross, Rushcutters Bay, and back then, 2012, it was like the cross was firing used to be going off every weekend and like uh, definitely had fun there's no denying that I, I used to have fun but we trained hard as well like we we always had that mentality of you know training hard and like you back it up you know if you're going out you got to back it up and we used to drive each other each other really well and I think that's what you need is to be successful in a club is like players keeping each other accountable and there's no better way of that than each us brothers we're keeping each other accountable and I think that really like sort of bred throughout the whole squad uh, back then. And, um, I don't know whether it's just me, but now I feel like everyone's married with kids, like really young, but back, back then we I feel like there was no one, hardly anyone, well, maybe I was just oblivious to it. But, <laughs> um, we used to, I don't know, we were just always, like, we used to call it on the scene, on this, co we'd get coffees and like after training we'd be, you know, where are we off, where are we going down the beach and this, and I feel like there was like 20, uh, like 20 of us all the time like out and out and about always about but like it's hard to get that nowadays um everyone's busy doing the thing and whatever or with the kids but yeah i think i think that was yeah i, I just remember looking back and thinking it was, it was a good time in our lives and uh, hmm. winning the grand final um like in my second year in in australia was like surreal and then obviously going on and um doing like oh, we've been striving to get back there for you know the last 10 years and we nearly got there in 21 but um yeah what what was behind that win like what brought that group together i feel like um there was obviously the disappointment of the year before when we arguably had a better team we had a, a, did you play in that manly game no that's the thing so i was I was in the. I started at front row in the in the last game of the season against the Roosters, and it was whoever won that game. We were, we were won the mining premiers, so we were both playing for the mining premiers that that last game. We lost, and I think um, Madge was a bit like, "Oh, I've got to go with a bit more experience in the playoffs." So I, I dropped down to the Bears in the playoffs, and Luke actually came back in, and you know we we. We got through uh, first week of the finals, and then we were flying. You know, we should have we, we even up in that game against Manly. We should have really um, gone away with that game, but yeah, we just got beat. And uh, yeah, what was it? Roosters. We sh it should have been a Roosters. Roosters South Grand Final. Grand Final, and that would have been good. But uh, so yeah, I think that disappointment let drove us. And then obviously there was a few things that went on uh, in the pre in the off season that year with Sam and a few of the players like ended up making the call that that was going to be their last year at South. So that was obviously a play, plays a factor that, you know, you've got players leaving who, you know, are a big part of the team. So their motivation is big. And, and like, for us as brothers, we were all just, like, on board with everything. And they like, we had a really strong, strong, tight-knit group. How were your celebrations after that? It must have been, like, to, to win a grand final, yeah. for, for anybody is... Yeah, uh, the 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 things of ach achieved dreams, mm. um, but to do it with you know your, your yeah. brothers by your side is is next. I level. remember, um, yeah, I remember just thinking, oh, how good is this? Like, this is this is me for the next ten years. Like, 
he's going to be doing this now. And um, it obviously don't always work out like that. But at the time, it was like unreal. Like I remember we we had the, obviously the Four Nations that year. So we, we didn't have much time to really go mad for me and George because me and George played in that. But we, you know, we had a few, um, that, that week was really good. Uh, we we didn't do, you know, the massive amounts that you'd think, oh, maybe you'd do, like, I think Ben Teo was on the podcast the other day and he said, like, he was disappointed in in uh, the, the celebrations and what we got promised to what happened. Uh, but Tommy B came through. I got us the, got us the yacht because um, we turned up to the, the, the harbour and they had the South Juniors uh, boat and it was like I think one of the engines had blown and we were just like looked like a fishing trawler <laughs> and all the boys were blowing up so uh, we jumped ship and got onto one of Joey Elias's boats he's always looked after us uh, all occasion cruisers give him a little plug but like yeah he, uh, he got us on and like it was good but then after the Four Nations me and George had a real good um, go at it, you know, over in America I went to America first time I'd been there I went I went on my own first to LA and then George came out with his uh, wife at the time. Oh no, they weren't married with Joe. And they uh, they met me out there and we just had a big like trip around America. And we were like wearing our grand final rings around, <laughs> around America thinking we were Super Bowl champions. But we, um, yeah, I loved it. And then, yeah, I went to see Sam in England, stayed over in England with Sam at Bath, because he was at Bath then at the time. Cause it, it was weird. Sam went straight over to England and started playing rugby union, so we didn't really get that chance to so celebrate with Sam. And then, um, yeah, so and then Luke was back into tr training and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I remember the South boys actually was on a preseason camp in uh, Nevada, in uh, they were out in Arizona somewhere around there, and we were in Vegas at the same time. And we, me and George, were going mad in Vegas, <laughs> and they were all like training hard and. It, I think that was probably a sign like we didn't celebrate it like, like we should have done. Like we were just stripped. It was more like the focus. Like Madge was very focused on, you know, going like again, you know, like he didn't want to go too mad. But I think you do have to celebrate when it happens because it is so like, um, you know, special when it happens. Isn't it? Yeah, it's infrequent. It is special. Mm. Um, you know, when you were in America, was it you or George that tried out with NFL? Yeah, it was me. Yeah, yeah were you see, we serious about that. Yeah, I was. Yeah, so when after when when I went to America for the first time, I went to a few games and I thought, you know, I got up close with some of the guys. And I thought, I know what I could. I've, I've I feel like I could do this. How did you compare in stature to them? Yeah, like they, like you they're stack no, they're, they're no, yeah, we, they're no like they're no more different to us in terms of because if you think about it we're at the top of our game in sport and athletic ability and everything and just because the population over there is bigger don't mean that they're any better it just that they're, they're still at the top percentage yeah of, of theirs they've just got a bigger pool yeah though. there's a bigger but pool how, but and it's a different type of athlete like they are more of mm. a, a power-based sport you know but it does i feel like it does transition over like for me i was looking at like the tight end athlete uh so they're on the offense and i was looking at that and they were did they compared me to rob gronkowski which is a freak but like i think because we take for granted our ball abilities like yeah being able to catch and you know track the ball that's one yeah. thing that they said to me was when i went over and trained over there they were like oh man you're tracking the ball is so good but we just take that for granted because we just always used to running and catching a ball yeah, yeah, at yeah. speed and yeah, I, I remember training. Uh, I went to like five different clubs over there because they usually what they do is they get do a workout, and all the clubs come to you and you do one workout. But because I was like just keen to just travel around, they're all like they've got obviously unlimited money on this. So they were just flying me around like everywhere. So like the, the somehow I got my number. I had an American number, and someone ring me up like, "Hey, this is you know that a so and so from Seattle Seahawks." Would you be interested in coming over to Seattle and doing a workout, you know, our facility, and then like Buffalo Bills, because the the original one was Pittsburgh uh, Steelers, and Russell had an in with them, and he said, look, if you're serious about doing it, I can get you in there, and then uh, what happened was they they have to like basically say on a 
like a, a forum that they're, they're working out this person this week and it goes to the whole of the NFL. Oh, like they have to like, yeah, yeah I, I know what you mean. So it gets- free, um, I was called a like free logged. agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then everyone was like, who's this guy? Who's he? Like, does he want to come see us? And so they're very like, um, what's the word? Uh, curious over there <laughs> is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> They're very curious over there on, on exploring different talent. And the, so I, when I was there, they literally, I went yeah. from one one training, out, one workout, they call it, to like five. Mm. So like how far down the NFL road did you go? So I and went why down the, continue? I went down the road of working out with the teams, the, them seeing me like doing medicals. I did medicals with everywhere. When they're really big on that, they have to cover their asses in terms of like, because a lot of people now are suing like NFL because they've just got a lot of cash. But um, I, I went down that route and then the general managers, they're the ones that make all the big calls over there. And they said, look, if you're really serious about this, we can look at getting you over here and like getting you into the, the practice squad. And you go from there basically. So I had, a, I had an opportunity to go, but then South came in and that's when South offered me a good deal. And I was just like, I just bought a place in Coogee and I ended up just saying, oh, look, I'm just going to st stick with what I know. And after going to a few more games, I actually got a bit bored of, of the game because just sitting and watching it, I thought, I don't know if this is actually for me. Like the, the thought of it was really good, but and I'm really glad I did go over and have a look at it. But after seeing a few games, I just saw a lot of like sitting down and a lot of uh, sitting around and not much action. I mean, there's always action, but it's half the team in it, like your offense, defense, special teams. Like, So I think I just made the call in the end, but I was really glad that I did go over. And then since then, they started doing the, the international program. So that's probably, I'm not saying I sparked it, but... Mm. It would have been I'll, interesting had that been available mm. back yeah, then. So yeah, been, a bit more of a clear pathway yeah there, that's what i mean there wasn't it was sort of just me going off yeah my contacts that i had and trying to get in that way and it worked but then i remember i always remember jo jordan mylata coming into training a like massive guy playing and he was playing in our 20s and i i just got back from america and seeing all these guys coming into training and the big lineman and I said, oh mate, you do, you're in the wrong spot. You lad, you need to get over to America. And he did and he's now like, I think he's one of the highest paid yeah. <laughs> over there now because he was obviously protecting the quarterback. But yeah, it's interesting. Like I really do think a lot of our players would do well out there if they just had the, the mindset of going out and- it, it's, a, it's a big risk though, isn't it? You've got- Yeah, you know, and, and it is. And it's a big risk to, to switch dreams. Like not many people, like once you get mm. that dream of NRL, like you switch that dream, yeah. one closes before you know both are gone. Um, but it's interesting what you say. I think uh, that there are transferable skills, and mm. you spoke you spoke there about the 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 stop start nature. Um, mm. Probably not as much need for conditioning, which you know some people like. But I want to fast forward you to the COVID year. They have the break and they bring in the six again rule. Um, yeah. A lot of people thought it's the end of the big guy. Yeah, the big boppers. How how did you react to that? Like, did you have to change anything in your um, the application to training? Because I think, like, for me, I, I'd, I'd always, um, you know, pride myself on my conditioning, mm. but, like, geez, that didn't miss. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's funny you say that because I, I remember when it first came in thinking, yeah, like, this is definitely uh, going to sort of affect the bigger guys because uh, you're not getting those breaks in play that you usually get. Um, but I think it just like, yeah, it just sort of made you have to do more effort on effort stuff in training and like a lot more uh, work. But like there's definitely a place for the bigger guys. Well, I, th I think there's now, there's even more of a place. More of a space. Yeah, if you can if you can do it, it's, it's good. Like if you look at like Big Nelson, like he's damaging still, and like you got to be able to like the front row is that you need to be able to yeah. bend the line back, impact, you know, yeah, like take energy out of the opposition by your mm. like your physical presence. 
And that's where the, the whole substitutes come, are so important now, isn't it? Because how you use your subs. Like for me, like I've probably transitioned more into maybe coming off the bench, bringing that impact, but it uh, doesn't necessarily mean like you're down in the pecking order or anything. I think it's more of a, a tactical thing that we that you can use as, as coaches can use like the, the bigger guys off the bench or, you know, it, if you want to start them, you can. But like, yeah, I think, I think it just sort of, I definitely had to change uh, my training a little bit and have to do um, definitely. I've always watched what I have to eat and my watch my weights program because I sit around that one twenty five kilo mark without even having to do much. And if I go more, then I'll just keep going. So I definitely like that's why I'm always looking at continually like what what I can do better and stuff like that. But like the lateral movement is the big one. Like in those when you get tired is the the big one for me like obviously teams come at the bigger guys now to try put work into them and it's that lateral movement that you get caught with um so yes yeah probably keep doing that lateral were, stuff we were, were you nervous though when it first came in i know um mm. like like i say that all it was like okay that I don't know whether they were trying to design this but it did it did have that feel of like mm. oh no the you, you like you'll become extinct, extinct yeah. in 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 no time. You'll just be yeah. There was definitely, found out. definitely chat about it, wasn't there? I mean, for me, I've always just like backed myself. But um, yeah, there was definitely a chat about well, the big man's going to become extinct. And but I, I'm yeah, I'm glad how it's sort of come out now and people actually you know realizing what the big man brings to the team and you know you. The, we're still playing a game of go forward, aren't we? You need to go forward, we need to get down the field. And the way the defence is now, it's like hard to make, make that go forward if you haven't got, I think, that punch. Yeah, well, you've got to be able to bend the, yeah, you bend the, line. Bend the line back, quick play the ball, mm. away you go. And I think it's it's more about the complement of, you, you can't have three big boppers on there. No. You maybe can't even have two. But if you've got one on there, they bend their line back and then, okay, front row of two goes yeah. after that then lock forward comes That's it, yeah. like yourself with cam murray you'd go and then either cook or murray goes after mm. the back of that so yeah you create that momentum and then they go off the back of that sort of thing because you need that quick one to get mm. going don't you yeah because you're just getting bashed you do well you, you you don't get any go forward you don't generate any sort of play the ball speed for the for those more mm. creative players on an edge and i guess it, it's it's always kind of been that way but um there was more, weren't there? Like back in the day, we had like me and George and Sam and like other players who were just sort of bending the line back when we were, you know, 13, 14, and that was our big go to, wasn't it? Mm. Just send each that other power in. power game through and, the middle. And now you probably couldn't do that because you'd, you'd, you'd use too many subs, wouldn't you? Yeah. And that's where the subs have come into play, like bring it down from 10 to 8. And probably, I think if they brought it down to 6, I'd start worrying. Mm. But what about now? Like, there seems to be more stoppages. Like every try gets checked. Mm. Do, you, do you think it, it it that first initial phase out of COVID got really quick? Mm. Then there was that period of acclimatization, and then now there's been other things mm. come into the game that has put the brakes on it a little bit. Do you think it? Mm. It's not at its peak speed now, is it? Uh, oh, sorry. As yeah. I'm asking you, do you think it's at its peak speed based off your career, like season 2023? Mm. Is that peak speed, or you reckon it's been quicker in years gone by? Yeah, I think it's. I think when it first came in, it was definitely quicker because the bunker wasn't as involved as well. But I think the involvement of the bunkers definitely played a role in it because now everyone's like, oh, you know, well, we just have to wait and see what the bunker says, like the ref's call on the Captain's field. Captain's challenge as well, that yeah. slows it down. Captain's that's another challenge. opportunity to... I think that's probably what they've done is to try and compensate for it. They've brought that in and, you know, I, I think, to be honest, where we're at now is is at a good spot. Um, the captain's challenge is a, a, a different part of the game. Like, I was captain for the first time this year, James. How did you feel? Against the doggies. <laughs> And uh, it was a funny one, and I thought, "Oh, was that that game I'm where using um, my challenge? If I get it, <laughs> was that that game where Tony Milne got Simbin um, for the shot yeah, off the kickoff, yeah. and they looked? They that kept, was it. Yeah, they kept looking and they kept looking. We stopped the game for about ten minutes. Yeah, um, but yeah, that's so. Like I, I used it in that game because um, 
I thought about I, I got it wrong, but I don't think it, it should have been a, you know, you know, when they they give you it back because it was like a, sometimes oh, it's like incon inconclusive. It's, it, it's wrong, but they give yeah, you a challenge yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it was funny. It was, um, it was a good experience, but yeah, that that game was weird. I, I don't think he should have uh, been sent off. For that but do you get sent or get sent? Yeah, I think he should have. It, been. Was, it, it was a strange one. That I mean, look, because it, it, the contact with it was with the neck from another player. Because he, it, he got, I, put, I can't remember exactly, but it was it was mm. it was strange. And then initially it was no penalty, mm. then a penalty, and then oh hang on a minute, back, yeah. you, you've got to go. Yeah, so I'm not a big fan of that stuff. Um, I think certain things there's got to be a cut off at a certain time. Yeah, it, it's just a delicate situation. we obviously with with head contact and and bunker yeah. interference and you know what we want our product to, to yeah. look like. It is very difficult. Um, and then even yourself, you know, it's that suspension that you got for the Sean yeah. Hazelton. Like the, the margin for error is is so yeah small and you know perhaps in two or three years ago that's just good good tackle tommy yeah you first yeah. first point of contact shoulder yeah, yeah and then there's a little bit of neck in there or it's just body on body and it's just well it, that was a big shot that one and i felt it was definitely a big collision and i looked at it i've looked at it multiple times and in in the at the time everybody who comments on the game every you know um expert as you say um <laughs> said like oh it's a good shot you know i can't see him getting like, yeah any suspension for that and then when you slow it down and pause it on contact like you can't tell if there's a separation between my shoulder and his head or not but i know that there wasn't mm. but i can't prove that there wasn't because we haven't got that that like ca capability of the camera angles mm. um you know there's so many angles but still can't tell this yeah. like the whiplash it was the whiplash that that knocked him out well this is this is an interesting one because i think you're right um so when you f frame by frame because of the whiplash effect it it will show a still of shoulder mm. contact with neck contact but that's not mm. what causes mm. the um the, the contact it's a byproduct mm. and i think now the argument is that the defender needs to factor that in. I think mm. that's what they're going to push. I've listened to. Uh, yeah, you can't. I, I think. I think we're getting to a point now where you can't actually shoot out the line anymore. Well, I think that that's basically like just what, to what, save yourself. Yeah. You can't actually. You're not going to be able to shoot out the line and try put that shot on anymore. Try and lift your team or you know dislodge the ball because you just like you said the margin of error. He dips his shoulder. He dips his head. Like it looks mm. bad and. Yeah, so it, it's a tough one. I understand they're looking after the players, and I I was very close to like sh um, going against that 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 charge. Mm. I'm kind of wish I did now, but you just can't. It's like proving in, in court, in it. You can't yeah, prove it, it. It it was it's a difficult predicament because it seemed at the time as well, like th there's times when charges it seems to be a bit in vogue to get off, mm. and there's that times where no one's getting off and i think that no. was you know the timing of of that offense and well that's it like, I yeah and, and then that carrot of well do i want an extra game mm. well i would yeah i think i think the guys give me like a 95 percent chance of um getting the extra week mm. so just, i was just like i'm not a gambling man no it's a anymore um it, it's just too risky but it's yeah, so the, the get the game, it needs to factor it all in. There's there's no no two ways about it. They've got to sorry, not even those two like a couple of things. There's lot lots of things that get that get spoken about. And the hardest thing for me was um, John Morris saw him a couple. I mean, I don't know Tom Hazelton, but uh, from all accounts, he's a good lad. But said like a couple of week a uh, week later, he was like, yeah, it was all right. I didn't I didn't get a uh, hit in the head or anything. Yeah, I saw like. Can that come into it? Like I feel it's, like that can come into yeah. it as well. But I mean, obviously, no one's going to be going out there trying to save other players mm. and getting three matches because we're all trying to fight for you know the same thing. But 
I don't yeah. know. Speaking of suspensions, um, the Sunday Simbin Fest mm. from a couple of years ago. So I want to speak first about the rivalry between South and Sunday. Roosters. Well, that was um, the year before. So, so. Yes, it was. It Was that? So that was like yeah. the last two years I've finished the year on suspensions. <laughs> Drats. Um, but that rivalry between you and Roosters, does it compare to like a Leeds Bradford? Um, and and w w what is it about like, what is it about that rivalry between um, um, you guys and, and, and Roosters? Because it does seem to bring out mm. the best and the worst. And I was at that game and it was just pandemonium. Like yeah. it was just not, not you, you arguably should have gone the one before. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and he just give a penalty, and it was like, oh no, like he's only gone and done it again, <laughs> like about two plays later. Yeah, it was, it was a bit like that because I remember coming off the bench and my first carry, like I think it was like Victor, Jared, and uh, another front rower, like got me and like drove me back, and I thought, oh, we're on here, like this, it's going to be a physical game, and and then like so I was fired up, and then yeah, obviously caught Tedesco. Uh, he does duck a bit, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I, whatever, I took that one. I thought it was a penalty and then, yeah, that just happened uh, in the game. And like I said, like the margin for error it can happen in those games. And I just take it on the chin, that one. But um, but then it's hard, like he, then he, he counts on your record then. Like, I think, yeah. I, I think I, I'm also seeing it in a way now, like, oh, you know, he's got a high shot on him now. Whereas I'd never been... I've never been uh, simbined or suspended before that um, year. I got done in against Cronulla a couple of weeks before that. So it's, it's, it's either Cronulla or the Roosters. I'm mm. That rivalry, though, th there is something about it, right? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, it does compare to like rivalries in England because of the history. I think it's all about the history and like going back to. Are, are you aware of that going into the game? Like th this is. Yeah, these the these guys. There's it's there's definitely there's some deep rooted yeah, issues yeah. between these two teams that'll never be resolved. And that's all it is. Um, end of the day, we're all peers. We're all playing. Like, I'm actually good mates with Victor now as well. Like after playing um, get with him for England, and he's he's a good lad. And um, and you know, I know most of the Roosters boys. And like you said, we're all just doing our best. But when you put on that jersey and you're representing the people. From the areas, you just just something you gotta, you have to like do it for them. Yeah, mm. you're playing for the fans. You're playing ultimately. I think you're playing for the fans who, in the areas, and they're the ones that drive the rivalry. Like the the types of like you know like Russell, he's he's a fan at the end of the day, and he's the one that drives you know the book of feuds. He loves it. He loves getting it out and driving it. But um, yeah, for, for me because I didn't grow up around here, I don't it's not as big inside me but you get on board with it after yeah. after a while you do get on board with it um definitely like after being here for a while now like i had to go i did a um a presentation the other day for a junior club around the area menai roosters and they asked me to go up and do like present and trophies for the end of season and i had to like they're all saying go the roosters and stuff and I, it felt really Really weird. I had to like. I was like, oh, I don't mm. know about this. Can you change his name to <laughs> Minai Rabbit Horse? But um, but end of the day, like it was just good, and mm. yeah, I, I didn't mind saying go the Roosters every now and then. Did you did you play any any Leeds Bradford games? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. How's that? How does that compare? Because I know that's a big rivalry as well for our Australian yeah. listeners. Leeds Bradford, um, like massive rivalries. A lot of history between those two. Mm. You know, I played in a lot of Saints Wigan. Mm games like the good friday because Le was leeds bradford easter thursday yeah it used to be thursday yeah thursday yeah. game i remember playing in, in a, a, a bradford leeds derby at Odsall on, on my birthday because it was i, I remember because it was my birthday and um they were trying to get twenty one thousand there for the 21st of april it was like a big promotion thing and we got it and it was a packed i think it's probably the most i've played at in at Odsall you know, that was sort of coming to the end of the glory days. And, um, yeah, it was unreal, that game. We won it against Leeds. And um, I used to support Leeds growing up, so I was a Rhinos fan. So it was a bit of a weird one for me because I was always on the other end of it. And Bradford always used to beat us, uh, Leeds. 
And then it changed when I was playing for Bradford Leeds. We were in the peak of their powers and they always used to beat us. But So it was kind of like, it, I don't think it matters as long as you're invested in that team. You're, you're just on board with the rivalry. Like, even if you're not from there, you're just on board. If you're wearing the colours, you're flying the flag, you're, like, you're just in it, yeah. But those, those rivalry games, you'll miss them. Like, mm. Make sure you treasure them because they, yeah, they're, they're the ones that you, you, you remember that, you know, the... The, the, they're the league games that the regular season games yeah. that you really do remember that feel, like because yeah. the, there's a different different atmosphere you you'd know what it's like mate when you go out and play those big games mm. like the against the roosters like the feel is different all week mm. the moment you walk out to warm up the moment you come out to kick off mm. it's just like you know there's that anticipation I think we had a good rivalry with the dogs as well. I always felt that when we, we played the dogs, good Friday, that Good yeah. Friday rivalry was insane. There's always something about that game, but like, yeah, you talk about the Roosters. Like this year, the last game of the season, missed it. Was suspended. That was probably the toughest game I've had to watch ever. Obviously, I know the the most disappointing like finish to a season ever because we, you know, got beat by the Roosters and we we're out of the playoffs. It was just like, for me, that was this year was the worst. <laughs> Finished to a year in my time at South. Uh, well, that segues us nicely. I was going to ask about you know, some of the, the coaches that you've you've been coaching. Mm. We'll, we'll maybe speak about Wayne just before we finish. But the end of this season, mm. what do you, what do you put it down to, or what do you what are your overriding thoughts on it? Uh, I touched on it earlier. Like I don't think there's one thing that sort of obviously. Um, we talk about like start you know after round eleven we were coming first and we were flying and all that sort of stuff and um, but I think like obviously there's a mixture of variables like there's there's players injured players in and out of origin um, you know that that continuing continuity what you need throughout the season of training and. Getting players on the training paddock, I've, I've, I've always thought like training is the most important thing for performance. Uh, you know, on the weekend you got to get those reps in on the field, and probably it was a period where we didn't get that through the year, and it definitely affected us. But then I thought, you know, we're going away on this camp. Um, we had our like tour. We had five yeah. games on the road, and I thought I was positive about it. I thought, you know, this could be a really good thing for us, bring us back together, and but. You know, looking back, it was probably too too long together on the road. Um, but that you know, I, I like, guess for, for for the listeners and and the viewers, like it can it can knock you around all that travel, mm. and it, and it all makes a, a difference. That's why we mm. you know players battled so hard for no five day turnarounds, coaches as well, because it, it makes yeah. a difference. And when you've got to you know, go to Perth, come mm. back go to Cairns, come back. Yeah. You know, it's for some, it's like, well, kind of, you're just doing your job, but it, it, yeah. it stacks up and it makes it does, a huge... It does. And we're not, I'm not making any excuses here because we, we did underperform and like we should have been, you know, better than where we were and we should have been fighting for that playoff spot. But um, yeah, like, you know, we, had to, we, we made the call to do it and like, at the time, it was like, right, look at this. We're going to go away for five weeks and we're going to get tight. It worked in COVID. It'll work again. But like in COVID, I think everyone was doing it, wasn't it? Like, and we were just sort of, it was the norm. But whereas in the back of people's minds, being like, oh, we've been a bit hard done to you. We're on the road for five weeks. Like, we're not just going down, you know, to Brisbane or whatever. We Like I said, we, we're traveling across time zones. We're going up far north Queensland and... um yeah, it was just, it was a factor. And like I said, that was a factor. Um, probably didn't, I mean, we, the, and there's no, um, the club couldn't have done any more for us. Like, the, the, we, you know, they had us in the best hotels, best facilities, all that stuff. But sometimes um, you don't need all that as well. And that, that can maybe go the other way, but I, I don't want to say too much because I don't, I don't want to stop staying in those uh, <laughs> nice hotels, but like, yeah, like, you know, it does, it does affect a little bit. And yeah, like I said, um, wasn't just one thing. It was a, a number of things and, um, you know, like we, we, we're, we're going to learn from it. We are going to learn from it. Um, but just how important is that, that learning point and 
you, you know, uh, yeah. like you, you know, opportunities are, are, are few and yeah. far between. Like with the roster that you've got, yeah, um, with some good handy additions coming in, especially Jack White, and that you just go, lads, we need to not forget, move no. past that. But like, there's a new focus now. Yeah, and like we definitely, you got. I like to say like always I've got the view like an L a, a loss is like a learning thing as well like it, that's how I see it and um it's not a failure uh, no season is a failure because I, I saw I really watched a, a good um interview the other day from that Janus um I've forgotten I can't pro- yeah I can't pronounce his last name but Antico- he's a ba- M- NBA player yeah he's one of the best players and they obviously didn't do a good too well this year the Minneapolis um Buccaneers and and he said like is it is this season a failure to you then and he's like he got he got a bit angry because he's like you know no no year is a failure because you're always growing you're always learning and I think that's where we're at I mean obviously we want to get results and that's we're in a results game and I can understand everyone's frustration because we we do have that roster that we should be getting you know should be up there and we should be in grand finals and um but yeah like you said it's just a, a, a number of things that come into factor and you know i w- would have liked to be in on the field you know in the last three games i thought i, I felt like i could have you know off- offered my services to the team and maybe helped out in a way that, and not saying we would have been in the playoffs if i was playing but i'm just saying like you would have made a difference it, so. i would have made a difference yeah and um i know what i bring and like that's what I want to just keep doing. I want to keep bringing that to the team, and uh, yeah, whoever's there, we just want to keep coming together as a team because we, we like you said, we've got a good team, got good players, um, and, th- and that's the thing. There's always going to be talk about players, uh, pressure on players, that sort of thing, and it comes with the job. And now we just got to learn how to handle the handle it. Yeah, well, I think like you say, you you, you don't lose your lane. Um, one of the one of the stories of of the year with Celso obviously was y- y- your brother. Um, mm. I, I'm not going to ask about the the exit, mm. but what I'm going to ask about is Sam the coach. Mm. Um, why 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 do you think he's coaching? Like, you can't get your head around it, can you? <laughs> no, I can't. Uh, he's just honestly, he's just um, he's a footy head. At the end of the day, he loves his he loves footy, he loves rugby league. We call it, um, but we call him a footy head because he just he's always been like that. You know, ever since he was a young kid, he's always uh, been you know carrying a ball around with him. He'd go to every one of my you know dad's games. He'd go to every one of my mum's games. Be there on the sideline, um, and yeah, he's just he's just a very big student of the game, and he's he's always still learning. I think you know to be honest, he's. His career was cut short with injury, and he's probably got he, he has got a lot more to offer the game. And I think he's he's gonna he's a really good coach. He's gonna keep going in his coach, and I think uh, his opportunity over in England is gonna be good for him. He's gonna um, learn you know plenty of good lessons over there as well, because you know you don't obviously have all the the things that go with it over in the NRL as a coaching job. Like the probably no disrespect, but there's probably not as much pressure. I don't know. Like, there's definitely pressure over yeah. there. But it'll, there'll be there'll be plenty of pressure at Warrington. and he'll probably have to do more as well. Like the yeah. the, the resources back home aren't mm. as vast as what they are over here. Yeah. So, well, he he did a year of coaching in you know country rugby league year, and the he, was, he was basically like the CEO. I think he said, <laughs> yeah. like he was going around organizing foot like training and all this sort of stuff. And yeah, like he he was dealing with all that stuff so he is very hands-on with everything i really admire his desire to um, do it like, yeah I, I i really do just after like obviously playing with him and then working with him as a coach as well he's um he has got what it takes um to to be the best i think he's got that mentality he's, he knows how, how uh, to manage players in he, he sort of he knows how to get them on board and, and get them firing and i think that's half the but you know the people skills element of yeah. coaching is probably it, undervalued, it, it, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's. I think it's. It's probably more. That's all. Wins. More. Yeah, he just manages his players really good, makes sure that they want to play for him, and like, yeah, like Sammy's good at that. He's he's 
he's a good leader of men and now uh, that everyone loves him who knows him so yeah. mm. mate i again i can't speak highly enough about my admiration for sam for not just what he's done in the game but to have the have the balls to go and do this coaching thing like because he certainly doesn't need to no i know it's a big call for him to go over there and i I'm, no doubt we'll see him back here at some point because you know he has got family back here and you know is it it is a big decision for him to go over there and um but i think it just shows how, how driven he is and and uh what, what he wants to do with him with himself and like you said he doesn't actually probably need to do it but he just he can't help himself he wants to do it he, he needs to go over there and and keep growing as a coach and um yeah he's always uh, he's always had that mentality and i think like i said earlier like mentality is uh, the biggest thing for me we well, you spoke uh, about wayne bennett and obviously you've been coached by some uh, amazing coaches for throughout the years and we did skip a bit but with, with wayne bennett hmm. bentos bentos you've had him on here haven't you we one, sure. of your, one of your first ones wasn't he yeah i think he was, he was early uh, I wish I could interview him now though. Like I look back and I just, my, my skills weren't as sharp as what mm. they are now. Uh, not that I'm, you know, maybe I'd probably prefer to interview him in a few years time when mm. it's a bit more polished. But with Wayne Bennett, what is it for you that sets him apart? You know, it, it's crazy. Like you talk about the relationship with players. I, I messaged him mm. only last week. It's like mm. far out. He got back to me and like, just about a couple of things. Mm. That, and, and, and a, and a phrase that he used to say and i was like man i'm not doing this mm. and yeah yeah he's good like it's just the like obviously the care factor he had for his players was big but then like what one story that um sam probably what mind me sharing was you know he he, he was able to pick players up when you you know he, he sort of pick them out when they weren't doing what he wanted and yeah, so he, he never he was never shied away from having that really tough conversation because like for him and sam they were really close and and like they, he loved sam but i think one one game he sam had, had a high shot or whatever and he got suspended um and he, he rang him up and basically said called him a selfish prick and said like yeah, you don't care about the team and and this and that and uh you know r r ripped into sam and Sammy was gutted. He like he said like he he was sort of gutted, and he thought he'd like really um, messed it up with with Wayne and and uh, and then basically he was, he was off it, and he was like went and did some training just to get it off his mind. And then, it, but the funny thing was, him and Wayne had to go do a promo with some corporates the next day. <laughs> so Wayne rang him up, and he's like, "I'll be uh, I'll pick you up, Sam. I'll be outside your house in uh, in ten minutes, whatever." And he's like, "I'm not coming." He's like, I'm not, I'm not coming. We are, I'm just busy, or whatever. He's like, no, I'm picking you up. You got to come. You got to come. So Wayne turns up to his house and he beeps it on, and he just sees Sam and Sam looks through the thing. And he's like, no, I'm just leaving him there. <laughs> <laughs> he's just gonna leave him outside. So he, Wayne stays there for probably 20 minutes, and he rings him. He's like, what are you doing? Are you coming or what? And he's like, I told you I'm not coming. And Wayne's like, well, I'm not leaving. So he said, you best come and get get dressed and get so us. So Sammy, um, he got got outside, got in the car, and did his thing. Like he obviously knew he had to do it, and he said, "If silence in the car on on the way to this promotion," and Wayne just put his hand on Sam's knee, and like said, "Oh, Sam, you know, I'm I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you selfish. <laughs> You're not selfish. I just I love what you bring, and we need you." And like Sam, like gets goosebumps talking about it because. And but that but then that that picked Sam up on what he needed to do and like that, he was his one of his main players back then and he just sort of didn't let him get away with it and, you know and and that's I think what you need as a coach you can't you can't um, you got to have you know everyone on board and yeah I can't put my word a uh, finger on it I know, exactly. I know exactly what you, I I get what you're trying to say you've got to have that. You gotta be yeah. direct. You gotta have those tough conversations. Yeah, and it's so like, yeah, the tough conversations is a big one for me. He never shied away from them. Yeah, yeah. He's he'd come at he'd come at the biggest players uh, just to make prove a point as well. 
So like he'd come at the players that you know you you probably wouldn't expect um, in the meeting, and you know because he knew that he could. Yeah, he, like I only had him for sort of three or four England campaigns, but mm. he um, certainly made a lasting impact on me. Um, we talk about Sam, the, the coaching endeavor. Mm. You've still got a fair few years left in yeah. What, what about you? What? Where, where yeah. you, and you know, um, I, I know um, Biff L. Luke is in the finance game now. Mm. Um, George pursuing a career in acting. Mm-hmm. Sam is coaching. What are you going to do? For well, me, what, 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 where, where are you at now with it? Yeah, for me, I'm, I'm, uh, I've, I, I always see myself doing like something with South still. Like, I've definitely. I'm going to be working with South, I think, when I retire. But doing what? In, in, in some capacity, like. Okay, well, what? Okay, I get. I, um, Blake Solly. Yeah. I, Tom, tell me your job description and I'll make it happen. So, ambassador. <laughs> but, like, I've really, I've always been interested in, like, uh, the mind, mindset, mindfulness, all this stuff. And I feel like I can offer something to players in that in that f- space and it's it's something that we need to keep growing as players and like if you had a player that had played you know multiple years at the club and then also had this knowledge as well like i'm, I'm currently doing um a course uh on like leadership and and um communication that sort of stuff like communicating with influence and it is hard for me like to do my study and um, I find it really hard to do any sort of study, but I feel like it, it's something that is, um, yeah, definitely applicable. But I also I'd like to just keep working in the community with South, like working at South Cares, do a good job. So I, I'd, I'd definitely uh, help them out in, in any way I can. But also um, it wouldn't be like a full time thing. Um, I think I'd do other things as well. Like, I think through your career, you pick up skills as well. Like, I talk about 10 years, like, people working, doing a 10-year in study and stuff. I feel like in your career, you, you go through and you pick up lots of skills. And um, for me, one one of my one is, is like, I've been working, um, I know guys well, um, S, um, oh, what's the name of them now? Um, AT, ATN, Australian tra- uh, Traffic Network. So that what they do is they sell advertising on, on like radio, um, between you know the, the traffic spots. So that oh, they, yeah. they provide all the traffic news for radios. I'm going off topic a bit here, but I, I've, I've definitely got a relationship with them too, and like working in like uh, with people um, advertising. And at the end of the day, that's what you do on promos. Isn't networking. It? Networking. So I can see myself doing something down that uh, road as well, like in Sydney. Network. Well, if you want to get some more sponsors for the buy round, we'd yeah. more than happily pay you 20%. So Yeah, sweet. Um, yeah, we sign you up. I'll get you on radio. I'm already on radio, mate. No, I'll get you advertising on radio. All oh, right, okay. Then yeah. watch, listen to the buy round. <laughs> <laughs> or me doing traffic reports. Imagine. Some Getting roads are pretty. Some roads are pretty busy out there, listeners. Some aren't. Would you get in the helicopter? Get on your sat nav. Uh, no, nah, probably not. Um, the thing you mentioned about mindset, really mm. important. Um, I don't have. Uh, I don't regret this, but I probably wish I paid more attention to it when I was playing. Um, listened to a, mm. a very interesting lady speak on mindset. Um, the other day, which I'll touch on in a minute, but I, I firmly believe it's why Jerome Luai is playing in this final series. Mm. His mindset, that that quote that he said, tell the doctor I'm built differently. Um, you know, anybody that knows about the placebo effect knows how strong mm. that the mind can be when you convince yourself of something. Mm. Uh, also the importance of finish line, the mindset, the approach to the finish line. Like if you're out for an injury, that's usually six weeks. When it, does it actually be fully recovered? Like, is mm. five weeks and six days okay? Mm. Well, is it or is it five weeks and five days? Mm. Five weeks and four days? Yeah. 
And yeah. then if you're definitive on that, like what, 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 when is the point of, uh, of full recovery? Um, mm. And I think it's Jerome Luai's mindset, uh, yeah. a little bit of the, the placebo or the nocebo effect. But this lady on, on, on mindset and just how um, we can't just be in such a fixed mindset about things. So mm. she poses the question, um, what's one plus one? Yeah. We've been told it's two. And it's always two, Just right? Deep, no. Is one plus one always two? No. Not if you minus it. <laughs> no. The one plus one always equals two, right? Yeah. She goes, okay, well, what about when you've got two baskets of laundry? You put them together. Mm -hmm. One plus one makes one. Or well, there's two clouds. They form together. Mm. One plus one makes mm. one. And it's just an interesting switch on 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 how your mindset can mm. be changed. And I'll, I'll I'll send it over to you. It's really yeah. fascinating listening. I love I love um, like looking at different she, things. She's she's honestly like a, a amazing. Like comp like those two things like really stayed with me. Like oh yeah, because I've never thought of it like that. Mm. Where like you know, okay. I, walk around with you put one plus one equals mm. two all the time well no 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 it doesn't mm. and it's it, it's so important in sport mm. like it's what I, I for me like perception is your reality so like if you perceive something mm. a certain way then you can turn it into you know your way mm. so like yeah it's very strong there like it, and that's something that we keep you know teams they keep doing continually but i feel like the biggest barrier is to get in people in who, you know, are very educated, uh, very good uh, with with how mind works and all that stuff. But the the find still find it hard to, you know, um, relate it to rugby to, league to, to to athletes. Yeah, and that that's that's the difficult like where you could be that intermediate yeah. with the the academic, or you know, mm. you could be the academic, but you're that natural intermediate because you know. Mm what rugby players, footy players are like, yeah. they, you know, an academic can come in and uh, yeah, they're yeah. not speaking the same lingo. So you'd get that education um, yeah, yeah. aspect of it, but be able to communicate it in a way that translates yeah. to, you know, the, the footballer that can go, oh, okay, I understand mm. that. There's no point in you, you know, talking about different areas of the brain and how, and mm. all things like cortisol and the chemical yeah. balance and all that and, and how, just how it actually, of, it's of the top just, of you were talking out your ass, so yeah. I'm not going to pay attention, and then therefore I'm not going to I'm not going to apply yeah. this knowledge that you've gone and studied for four years for that will have a positive effect on me. But because of the way, communication, the messaging mm. it is vital. It, it really is, and I think even you know if you look at it, it, always fascinates me where how far we can go in athletic pursuits and endeavors. I think there's not much more that we can do with our genetic potential like i look at you as an athlete and think like well how much more mm. can you put into tom Burge as the athlete like you've reached your genetic potential the only other ways of improvement for performance mm. now would come through equipment so i know that there's um there's certain equipment out there that helps with running economy you mm. know different training methods but then mindset like i i don't even think we're getting close mm. Yeah, and that's Based what off I've the, thought yeah. for for a while now. I've thought that for a while. Like when when I started getting into it, and then like I sort of came away from it a little bit. Like it wasn't like we actually had a guy that used to come in. Uh, two people used to come in at South and do it to the whole team, and then uh, it was sort of decision was made that you know it's not what we want to do anymore. And but like I've always continued with it because mm. I liked it, and um, yeah, like it's still still I think there's better ways to like you said communicate it and like you probably were the one one of the ones that were like oh you know stuff this yeah um this isn't for me but as if if it had been communicated better to you um from a player who you know he had that trust and it might have uh, come across better mm. but well, well and also the difficult um the, sorry the difficulty with implementing it into team sports mm -hmm. that play a week to week sport is losses mm -hmm. yeah like that's where that's where it comes unstuck because yeah, yeah. we react to a loss and we have this um association with uh, we, we want to attach meaning um 
mm. to, to losses. So we lost because I was too fixated on this mindset yeah. bullshit. Or, yeah, yeah. okay, it's not, yeah, we'll be lost, so it can't work. Where you're like fighters, um, uh, um, track and field athletes, tennis players, they, mm. they're not playing that week to week thing. No. That their mindset is ingrained in them. They yeah, get a little yeah. bit more time to work on it. So I think that's another aspect of it. It's like, how can you communicate the, the mindset piece to a week to week um, mm. contact sport athlete? Mm. And have it be effective, and and, and have that, yeah. like that peace with loss, and you know the, the mindset of mm. we don't lose, we learn. Mm. We're not going to go away from this, guys. And having a coach that's strong enough to go, yeah. we you know there's we're, it's a finite number of hours in the in the training day. Like shit, we've lost, but okay, well mm. we're going to go and practice our edge D because that's where we got picked apart. And then the mindset stuff, oh, it's not on the pri- it's not on yeah. the list of priorities. Can't can't mindset. Fuck that! I, I, I need to f- yeah. fix this left edge. It's yeah, leaking yeah. points, but maybe it's counterintuitive to think because that's what they've thought. Is I've just got to rep, yeah. reps, 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 like you said, reps, 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 which are important, yeah. right? That's yeah, yeah. that's our school of thought that we come from. But perhaps it's just like, well, hang on, we need to be, we need to use mm. our minds and our brains to actually overcome the problem as opposed to yeah. simple repetition. It's concentration, isn't it? On in a game, that's you don't lose your talent week to week. You don't lose like I mean obviously there's factors that come into like injury and fatigue but then like the, you're still the same player it's what's changed is your concentration and that you know that's what can you do to fix that yeah yeah all right well anyway we've sort of gone off track a little bit but it's been I, I do yeah, enjoy those good. those aspects but we got a uh, we got four parts of the show for each and every guest the first one is the uh, the dream spine. Brought to you by Tui's. We've enjoyed one. Feel like a Tui's. How do you feel? I feel like a Tui's or two. We only had one though. Uh, but anyway, and feel like Tui's. A Tui's or two. There, I'm glad you like the jingle. That shows yeah. you've been listening. Um, Tui's are all about teamwork. Uh, every team needs a spine. There's no rules for this, Tom. So uh, the dream spine any. played with, played against, watched, witnessed, admired. One, six, seven, nine. Right. Well, as number one, I'd have to go with Greg Inglis because uh, when he was, you know, in that fullback role, he was very hard to beat. You know, looking back as a front row, I used to see him bringing it back, and he'd, it was a good feeling knowing that he was going to bring it back for you and get over that. You know, get out of that red zone. He's every time he was out of there, and you know, over that twenty meter mark, thirty meters, um, just so so like valuable for a middle. Um, to see that and then uh, six uh, I'd have to go Cody Walker because he's um, you know there's not much he can't do with, with the ball he's um, he's you know I've, se- I've seen I've seen a few players um, through the time and yeah so seven um, it's hard to go past Renault it's what I know Adam Reynolds uh, I think obviously coming in uh, as a young lad at South he was just um killing it back then and then you know it, it's a bit of a touchy subject but no I don't think he should have left um right south but you know it, these things happen in sport we play we play in sport and I I no under no illusion you can keep everyone all the time and you know I'm, I'm happy when I get tapped on the shoulder to move on or what uh, a disgruntled employee I'll just get on with it and um, but yeah, like I said, I think Renault number seven. He was. Uh, you see what he's done this year with with the Bronx, and you know he's. It, we used to have a, a joke that he, he didn't play preseason games um, at Souths because he's he's good at getting out of them. But um, yeah, he's uh, he, he's still up there, mate, and his goal kicking abilities and. Still, uh, still won't forgive him though for missing that goal. <laughs> <laughs> Harsh. Um, um, what about your your dummy half, your nine? Yeah, it's a tough one. I've had plenty of good nines through the, through the years, and obviously as a front row, you have a good, really good bond with your nines. Um, obviously, we had, we loved Isaac Luke like a, a brother, and then I'm really close with Damien Cook now. As uh, as you know, we're both in the Shire Shire crew, but um, I really I can't stop thinking about that game we played together in the All Stars game. Me and you started, remember? And we yeah. had Cam Smith in there, and 
to be able to play with him, um, just the one game, uh, just the the direction he had um, out of dummy half, and like everyone just knew what they were doing. And like we, you know, we'd not never played with him before. I'd ne I'd never played with him, but it felt like he had. And I, it just goes to show why he was, you know, so good mm. in his career. And I think for him to play that many games, you know, in the middle. Can't go past him. Yeah, well, that's a pretty impressive spine. Greg Inglis, uh, Cody Walker, um, Reynolds, and Cameron Smith. Um, yeah. I think big shout out to Therese. Thanks for Therese. I find it hard to put to yeah. put players who I haven't played with. Yeah, I know what you mean. Because you, you don't know. Do I'm you? a bit surprised you didn't put Luke Gale in there. But I mean, Gailey. Peppers. Peppers. Well, he's been doing his squatting, hasn't he? So he's. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's, oh, a, dear. that's another good Wayne story <laughs> mm. telling him to do his squats and he could be the best seven ever <laughs> but yeah Gailey is up there yeah he's a good lad Gailey throw Gailey in there yeah throw Gailey in on, take on, off. Get Gailey in 14 off the bench no take Ren off actually <laughs> <laughs> alright well thanks for twoies uh, for that part of the show how do you feel I feel like a twoies or two and they were all about teamwork and uh, the refreshing Aussie lager has gone down well today um awesome. Yeah, and the three questions we do each and every guest as well. Uh, if football didn't exist, what do you think you'd be doing? Hmm. Uh, my first thought, I've not really thought about this, but straight away... I'm well, just, thanks, mate, because I did send yeah, well, these I questions two days like ago. To, I don't like to be pre, you know, pre -empt. Well, these are the sort of questions you need to no, be... No, but I, I'm straight away, I'm thinking... You need to be looking at... Straight away, I'm thinking I'd be a teacher. I'd be, I'd, I'd be a teacher. Imagine you as a teacher... Because I've got... No, I'm not... I'm just saying your physical presence. I've got You'd be patience. shitting yourself. I've got patience. Oh. And I've, I can handle... Like, I feel like I'd be a good teacher. And my mum was a teacher, so I'd probably just follow in yeah. her footsteps. My Both my parents are teachers, and I wouldn't like them for, to have taught people like me. And I, yeah. I reckon in an alternative universe, if we could run a simulation, I reckon you wouldn't be a teacher if you had me in year 12. No, not year 12, In at the age of 12, in about year no, I 8. Have, I would have got you going good. I, actually, you know what? I'd probably have respected you. Yeah. It depends if you could shrink you down to like the size of my it, German or French <laughs> teacher. You'd be like, I'm not doing this. You could see me as headmaster. Yeah, how can you too big? Oh, well, you need to be big, don't you? A big presence. Size. No one would cop, you, you wouldn't cop any shit, would you? Discipline. Imagine coming to Mr. Burgess's office. You'd be shitting yeah, yourself. I you? would. <laughs> I, I, you know, like at our school, I always liked it to rebel a little bit. You weren't allowed to yeah. wear brown shoes, but Bobby Brown shoes here yeah, did. Leather uh, ones. Yeah. Look, uh, I think I had Lacoste boots. Not your DCs. <laughs> <laughs> you, weren't, you weren't wearing them back then. <laughs> no, the, 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 the DCs. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't. Um, there was some. They were, <laughs> they were good shoes. <laughs> the DCs. They've seen some miles on DCs. They say if they if they if they could talk those oh. DCs, mate. Jeez. And your safety shorts. Safety shorts with the DCs. How are they on. going? The safety shorts. Uh, you got a pair for me? Uh, no, we got a, we got a t-shirt for it. I forgot to put my t-shirt oh. on. Actually, uh, I can get you a t-shirt if we if we got a size that fits you. Uh, no, the safety shorts are a limited edition. Sorry, Tom. Oh, sorry. Um, I love my safety shorts. Yeah. Um, but the, 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 those DCs. <laughs> Do you know what? I'd worn them for years. Like, I'm a type of guy that wears his training shoes for a long time. I'd had yeah. them, like, all camp. And then it wasn't until, like, the very end. So I was like, oh, what are them DCs? I might have been wearing them all, all camp. <laughs> and then they became... Um, You've become yeah. known for them, haven't you? Yeah. But you know the positive thing about the wearing a pair of shoes like DCs? People don't stand on them. Like Gailey, new pair of expensive mm. shoes, didn't enjoy yeah. once the liquor was flowing in the and the Put sort of the, you know, just standing on his shoes. Like you get very, very aggressive. In fact, were you in the hotel room? Or touching his hair now. <laughs> were you in the hotel room when um I've I've like snuck I think it was in his room and I've snuck one of his shoes and like I've got like um a Sharpie marker and I'm oh. all, I'm like, hey Gailey, who do you want me to do you want me to write to Luke and I'll sign these shoes oh. for you? And he was f like fuming. <laughs> and he's like, if you'd done that, like he would have he said that he reckons he would have punched me. Yeah, it's funny, Gailey with his gear in here, with his mm. with his stuff. Um you being a teacher, now that that is interesting. Uh Parlez français. 
Oh, your French teacher. Yeah. I see. That's even worse because I had a bit I of... I would have got you speak your French. A right? bit of a poor attitude towards my uh, language teachers, mm. to put it uh, mildly. But you wish you knew it now, didn't you? Um... I mean, no. if I was to have one wish, it's probably not to be able the ability to speak. Well, French what's that or German. question? If you could speak every language or you use every instrument, what would you choose? Definitely yeah. play every instrument. Yeah. I think with AI now, I'm not even going to be able. It's going to be, it's mm. make you be redundant in no time if you're a language teacher. Mm. Maybe. Probably got about five. I reckon about five, ten years before all these AI Universals. translate. No, it's not you. It'll just be that they'll be able to just translate, translate in, away, a, yeah. in an instant. Yeah, Stephen French style. Um, most interesting person that you've met. Um. Well, uh, R Rusty's pretty interesting, but I won't say him. We well, just um, did. So. No, I can't say him because everyone knows that. Uh, I'll try. Well, to if he if he is the most interesting person that you've met, then I would like you to say him. Uh, no, I'm going to say, um, your mate, Ed Sheeran. Did you meet him, did you? Yeah. Where at? Just at uh, one of his concerts. <laughs> he, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I got introduced no, to him oh, I was, I'm glad that you finished that off with that you got introduced to him because... <laughs> I didn't say who's the most interesting person you've seen but alive. He, um, but then, like, just meeting him, and then, but then, like, not knowing him properly, like, me, like, watching his documentaries and stuff. Pretty interesting blog. Did you say? You, have you met Wim Hof? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's up there too. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I don't. You can only pick one. You've you I know Wim. three. I, know I Wim didn't. Well, Wim's like, you know, I've got him on speed dial now. So yeah. Just hold on, Wim. <gasps> <laughs> How you going, mate? Oh, <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> do you ice bath or not? Uh, not anymore. No, really. I I, I do every single morning. Wake up, oh, uh, part of the routine. Go outside in the pool. Bump. First thing I do. Really? Before I do anything, yeah. See, that's good. Yeah, no. I cold shower outside. Don't touch my phone. Say hello to Mother Nature. Grab the trees. Say thank you. Say what oh, I'm grateful right. for. I swear to God, every single morning. So charge your phone downstairs so don't wake up and look at my phone downstairs. You touch the trees. Touch the trees, say thanks, mother. And then say out loud what I'm grateful for in the pool, cold shower, bang, that's ready for the good. day. Yeah. No wonder you're doing well, mate. Maybe that's it. Um, a sliding doors moment that you think about the alternative. So for me, it might be something like if I hadn't moved here. Yeah. Think about like what life would be like at home is the... Something that springs to mind. This is where you know reading the question and doing some preparation probably comes in pretty handy. No, I, like, I don't like to <laughs> to prepare for questions. I've always been. I mean, the sliding doors moment for me was that phone call with George. You know, like similar to you coming out to Australia, but like I was very close to going. You know, and signing for Wigan. Who knows what could have happened? Um, yeah. Sorry to uh, be not. It's not very exciting, but that's all right. Well. Tom, thanks for uh, joining us. We've done nearly two hours here. It's been uh, yeah. fascinating. It goes quick, chat. doesn't it? Uh, no, it just goes at a normal speed. I think it goes quick. <laughs> no, it, the time stays the same. Just your perception, though. No. It is, uh, but yeah, there's, there's been no difference in the effect of time. It's just maybe a, a false perception. One of my most um, annoying things to hear that, oh, it's yeah. it's quickly approaching five o'clock. Like, no, 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 it's not. It's not. It's exactly the same. But uh, I'm not going to go into that too much, mate. Thank you so much for joining us on the buy round. I uh, Thanks, really uh, I enjoy your company at the best of times. Yeah, it's mate. been good to, to sit and chat and go on some uh, tangents. And um, I do miss you on the end of season uh, England duties. Now it's not the same. No, that was. Um, I, sometimes I used but to look me and, me and Victor are on the same flight this year, so that should be interesting. Remember but, our flights over, we used to be pretty good. That was some great times. Me, me you, Hodgson. Yeah, I think uh, Gaz. Gaz, Sam. yes. The, have you still got the um, the Polar? Do you remember the Polaroids that they give us on Emirates? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, from the, yeah, from they, the bar. Yeah, they were some 
do you remember that one when we went to the back and Steve Mack was on the flight with us because he was the assistant oh, yeah, at the Roosters yeah. and he sort of walked past him and he's just like shook his head yeah he just knew what we were doing <laughs> didn't he they said you need to sleep at this time and this. <laughs> we're just creeping around like oh, school boys yeah that's when you like that opened my eyes that go business class and there's a little bar on the flight so well be rude not to Mm. Well, good time. Is Bateman on your flight? No, he's already over there, John. Mm. He's proper English, isn't he? So he's gone straight back. That's disappointing. He's he's always good value. Yeah, Bateman. I, I mean, Smelly was meant. Was, the three Musketeers last year was me, Victor, and Elliot Whitehead. So we got on like house on fire because I've always got my Smelly because I've known him since I was young. But uh, Victor fit in with us well because obviously we were the three that are over there from Oz. That, didn't really have any family over there um so yeah it was good we would mm. th- call ourselves the three pigs three pigs because he, he likes pigs it's a that's a compliment okay it's not a bad thing all right um we do you, what what's um what's the possibility of you ending up in a bateman headlock on the on the tour oh there's a big possibility yeah <laughs> i'd say I, I don't miss that yeah like no i've got i've got you, plenty of them <laughs> Do you, you know you know when I come? Do you remember when I met you last year on the World Cup? <laughs> yeah. And like we're inside like two minutes. Yeah. I'm in Batty's headlock. I'm like, yeah. Fucking hell, Batty, let me go. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Well, got, you, right. Made, you made the, the decision of saying like, oh, I'm not sure about what you're doing, and he's like, I get you. Yeah. Well, he told me all about his Tigers deal and what he thinks he should be doing. And I don't think he listened to a word I said, but mm. it was. It's something I don't miss being in a Bateman headlock. You've got that to look forward to, Tom. But uh, again, if we're, if we're talking about um, probability, it's a dollar, dollar ten, I'd say. Yeah, that you'll be in there looking up, going, uh, "Yep, yeah, thanks, John." He's a strong, strong bloke. Isn't he? he is, and he, he's good fun. He's a fun man. Um, all right, Tom, I'll let you get back to it, mate. You got a long trip out to the Shire. You know, it's about what forty minutes away. I'm gonna but, go see Sam. Thanks for joining us. This oh. is in labour. I like. All right, okay, well. We might have a baby now, actually. News. Right. Announce it right yeah, here. Announce it. <laughs>